Used to be when people talked about the end of the world, we locked them up or laughed them off, sometimes both. But we never took them seriously. Maybe we should have. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Better to start at the beginning with the abduction of Desmond Miles, my son. This boy had no ambition, no direction, no plans for the future. What he did have was a heritage, one he chose to deny. It nearly cost him his life. He was captured and imprisoned. Those who took him believed he could help them find something. The apple. One of several artifacts we call pieces of Eden. Bits of ancient technology scattered across the globe. Some hidden, some found, all of them dangerous. Most are held by a single group, the same group that now had Desmond. You know them as Abstergo Industries. We know them as the Templars, as the enemy. We've been fighting them for thousands of years, even longer if you believe the stories of their origins. I do. After all, I've seen the truth. That's the beauty and the horror of the Animus. A device that allows us to enter and experience the lives of our ancestors. It holds the power to change everything, to show us history the way it really happened. Up until its creation, to the victor went the spoils, went the truth. We're trying to fix that, to free minds and bodies both. But there's only so much that we can do, and the Templars have the upper hand these days. But something larger than the Assassins and Templars is approaching, bigger than all of us. And if we can't find a way to stop it, these next few weeks will probably be our last. Everyone's last. In the end, it all comes down to him. To Desmond. Through the Animus, he discovered his heritage, explored the lives of his ancestors, and uncovered their secrets. When that was done, he trained. He used another ancestor to provide decades of experience in the span of a few days. It worked. We think. We hope. Soon, though, soon we'll know that ominous date fast approaches, December 21st, 2012. None of us knows what it'll bring, only that this is where they want us to be when it does. They've been guiding us in their own fractured, frustrating way. These voices from the first civilization, the ones who came before, a precursor race of immense power and uncertain motives. They're the ones who made the pieces of Eden. This is where they've led him, and through him, us. He stands at the entrance to this long lost place, armed with the knowledge of Altair and the abilities of Ezio. He holds in his hands the apple of Eden, and we stand at his side, ready to support him, however we can. His name is Desmond Miles, and he has brought us to the end. here. Let's go. In another moment, down went Alice after it, never once considering how in the world she was to get out again.
here. You must find the key. Son? Sir? <sighs> Here we go again. Desmond? Do you hear us? <sighs> yeah. What happened? The temple triggered a bleeding effect. You collapsed and entered into a fugue state. So naturally, you dropped me into the Animus instead of, I don't know, making sure I was okay? You weren't in any danger. Besides, the temple appeared to be communicating with you. And I didn't want to risk severing the connection. At least not until we knew what it wanted. Right. Of course. Son, I... No, it's fine. I get it. And I know what I'm looking for, by the way. It's a key. Just no idea where it is, though. I guess that's why she triggered the bleeding effect. She? Juno, Dad. She's talking to me. Okay, Desmond. While you were, uh, visiting Constantinople, we picked up a software update for the Animus. I'd like to run a couple of quick tests, make sure there aren't any major issues. What do you need me to do? We'll start simple. Walk to the marker over there. Okay, Desmond. Let's practice climbing on these objects. a constraint. These are optional objectives that raise your synchronization rate. All right, Desmond, follow the on-screen instructions and kill the two Templars. All you have to do here is jump the gap.
Production levels look good now. We should be able to build the world. Time to find out what the temple wants from you. Sir? Sir? Everything all right, sir? Yes, fine. I'm just preoccupied, that's all. Don't forget your invitation. Master Birch will be meeting you inside. Thank you. Where shall I retrieve you once you're done? In front of the Opera House. And be quick about it. Don't expect to be here long. I'll bring her round at once. Invitation, please. Shall I take your coat, sir? Ladies and gentlemen, you are requested to kindly find your seats. Good evening, sir. This way, please. My apologies. Evening, Haytham. Reginald? I can't tell you how happy I was to hear they'd mounted this revival. Gay's best work by far. Have you seen it before? Once. My father brought me here as a child. Though I remember little of it. I don't suppose tonight will afford me the luxury of a proper viewing either. No, I'm afraid it won't. On to business then. Do you see him? Be seated in one of the boxes above. The stairs are watched. You'll need to find another way up. I already have. A thousand pardons. So sorry. My apologies. Stage bright. A little Dutch courage up with a bloom in the cheek.
pay for them. You should have come to me. We would have found another way. Yes. But then you would have known. For what it's worth, I'm sorry. As am I. I beg your pardon, man. Did you don't push him, please? Patience, please! Let us order! We must have order! Try to remember. It happened we right in that balcony. What? what are those There's men doing, man? I'm staying where it's safe. Move! Move! Peace, friends, there is no danger! Imbecile! Where are you going? And how was the opera? Rather dull, truth be told. Shall we be off then? Aye. To Fleet and Bride. By your command. Fascinating. Gentlemen, I hold in my hand a key. And if this book is to be believed, it will open the doors of a storehouse built by those who came before. Ah, yes. Those who ruled, reigned, and vanished from the world. Do we know what it is that will be held within? It could contain certain knowledge. Perhaps a weapon, or something as yet unknown, unfathomable in its construction and purpose. It could be any of these things, or none of them. They are still an enigma, these precursors. But of one thing I am certain. Whatever waits behind those doors shall prove a great boon to us all. Or our enemies, should they find it first. They won't. You've seen to that. I assume you know where this storehouse is? Ah, Mr. Harrison. Gentlemen. How fair your calculations? I believe the site lies somewhere within this region. That's a lot of ground to cover. My apologies. Were that I could be more accurate. That's all right. It suffices for a start. And that is why we've called you here, Master Kenway. We'd like for you to travel to America, locate the storehouse, and take possession of its contents. I'm yours to command. Although a job of this magnitude will require more than just myself. Of course. Upon this paper are the names of five men sympathetic to our cause. Each is also uniquely suited to aid you in your endeavor. With them at your side, you will want for nothing. Well, then I'd best be on my way. I knew our faith in you was not misplaced. We've booked you passage to Boston. Your ship leaves at dawn. Go forth, Haytham, and bring honor to us all.
fresh air might do me good. Good morning, Doctor. To you as well. A question, if I may. Do you serve aboard the ship, or are you simply taking passage? A bit of both, actually. I've been commissioned by the Royal Navy to study maritime illness. I'll be observing the crew during the journey. We have found that uh, sailors fare far better on the open seas than the rest of us. I hope to discover why that is. Well, I hope you are successful in your endeavors. As do I. Thank you for the kind words. A moment to talk? Ah, a fellow Londoner. Good to see I'm not the only man of means aboard. Rupert Martin, pleased to meet you. Haytham Kenway. Pleasure. Seems we picked an excellent time to leave the city. Oh? You didn't hear about the murder at the Opera House? No. What happened? They're still trying to sort it all out. And I suspect they'll be at it for a good long while. Any word on the motive? They've ruled out robbery. So perhaps it was a business arrangement gone sour. Or something more personal. More lurid. Who knows? But I am glad to be away from it. The city grows more dangerous by the day. Mr. Kenway. I just wanted to thank you again for taking me aboard and apologize for any inconvenience it may have caused. Inconvenience would be an understatement. I'm sorry, I don't follow. My ship was held in port for two days that we might accommodate you. I lost several contracts as a result. I had no idea. Of course not. You nobles are all the same. Hello, sir. Do you expect we'll have a pleasant crossing? It is a quiet time of year, though rogue storms and troubled waters are not unheard of. But no need to fret. At worst, they'll prove an inconvenience. I'm more concerned about pirates and rogue privateers. Have you encountered them before? Aye. But the Providence is a strong ship, and her crew well trained. They will surely keep us safe. and then all will be well. Are you sure about that? Of course. Have I ever led you astray? Nah. No, you don't sit right with the others. Have faith, my friend. You'll see. Well, well. Seems our esteemed guest has deigned to grace us with his presence. You might want to head back to your quarters. Top deck's no place for tender Parnells. <laughs> so I thought. And yet here you are. Fancy yourself a joker, eh? Let's see how funny you find this. That's enough, Graves. Stay out of this. Listen to this, Hector. Thinks he can swagger on up here and declare himself king of the castle. Please, fast. Call this off. If the captain sees to us... To hell with the captain. And to hell with you, Mills. Who signed you on anyway? 
We're ready to go again if you are. This is unwise. Why is that? You think I'm afraid of you? No. But you should be. Do you yield? Never! <clears throat> How do you like these odds? What's the meaning of this? Captain! Explain yourself at once, Mr. Kenway! These thought we were simply passing the time with a bit of sport, Captain. How about you pass the time by doing your goddamn jobs instead? I wasn't aware I was paying you to loll about. A word, please, Mr. Kenway. Oh, I nearly forgot. There's your knife back. <coughs> I don't care for you, Mr. Kenway. I've had nothing but trouble since you came aboard. Your problems have nothing to do with me. I beg your pardon? You're a poor leader, ill-tempered and cruel, and it's clear your crew has no respect for you. Look, I don't want to argue. In fact, I need a favor. Oh, this is rich. I suspect some of the men intend to mutiny. Really? What a surprise. As I cannot trust any of them, I am compelled to turn to you. And why should I help you? Because if they do intend to betray, I'm the only hope you have of reaching America alive. Well, what will it be? If what you say is true, what other choice do I have? Thank you. But let me be clear. Should you ever dare to insult or threaten me again, I'll not hesitate but to cut off your head myself. Are we understood? Excellent. Good day. Mr. Kenway. Captain? Whatever they're up to, I believe it's coming to a head. I'd best get to work. He's cut our rations again. Claims we're not provisioned for such Easy. luxury. You looking for another fight? That it? Go away. You. Quite the basting you gave Graves and Quill. Wasn't by choice. Aye. Blockheads, the both of them. Where are my manners? Louis Mills. Pleased to meet you. Atham Kenway. So. Should I be watching my back? I think the boys learned their lesson. That they're normally not so nasty. Honest, it's just the past few crossings have been a bit rough. Oh? Captain's trying to cut costs, reduce rations, lower wages, more dangerous cargo. It's put the crew on edge. Is there cause for concern, then? Not if I can help it. But the captain needs to think about the way he treats his men. You there. I have some questions for you. That's nice, but I ain't got time to gossip. Probably wouldn't have anything useful to share anyway. 
You want information? Try the cook or the doctor. Everyone's always chatting them up. Won't be serving for another couple of hours. Some biscuits in the barrel if you're desperate. Actually, I've come with a question. What's that? Have any of the men been acting strange recently? Said anything that struck you as out of the ordinary? The boys cry about the rations, as if there's anything I can do about it. But beyond that, I ain't heard much. My advice? Go find James. His ears are always open. And where might I find him? Right behind you, actually. He's the one sitting on the barrel. A doctor, if you have a moment. Have you taken him? Oh, nothing like that. I was wondering if you'd heard any rumblings of trouble aboard. What sort of trouble? Unusual complaints or grievances. Men taking issue with the captain you or the You sound just like James. Like I told him, I've been much too busy with my research to notice anything not work-related. And where might I find James? The galley's your best bet. Now, if you'll excuse me... Are you James? Aye. Haytham Kenway. Pleased to meet you. I know who you are. I was hoping you could answer some questions. I figured as much, but not here. Follow me. Oh, what do you want to know? Have you seen or heard anything out of the ordinary since we left port? Anything that gives cause for concern? Some of the men have been gathering at night on the upper deck. I've only caught bits of their conversations, so I couldn't say for certain what they're up to. But I suspect it bodes ill. Is it a mutiny they're planning? All I know is they've little love for the captain. Mills has been trying to talk him down, but there's only so much one man can do. Thank you for the information. I only wish to see us reach the colonies alive. You must expose whatever they're plotting. Your crew's a tight-lipped bunch, but I'll see what I can do. Well, hurry up! Evening, sir. How are things? Calm and quiet, just the way I like it. What brings you topside? Thought I'd wander a bit. Stretch my legs. That's all. Take care where you tread. The deck hides all manner of danger in the dark. What was that? Someone's throwing cargo overboard. But why? He's got our rations again. Claims we're not provisioned for such luxuries. It's not right that you should feast on lamb and wine. We're stuck with tinned fish and biscuits. Hmm.
any news? Each night it's the same. I scout one area, and they drop the painted barrels from another. I'm going to need to recruit an extra pair of eyes. Maybe James or Mills. Why are they doing this? Near as I can tell, the barrels serve as markers. They're leaving a trail. My fear is it's only a matter of time before whoever's following it. Ship sighted aft! She's making ready to fire! Beat to quarters, men! Ready the... Brace! Everybody down! A warning shot! Seems they don't mean to sink us, but board us instead! Man the cannons! Make ready to fight! I want you below decks! Why? Let me help you secure the ship. Do you know how to rig a sail? To load a cannon? To wage war at sea? I didn't think so. Now return to your cabin, or do I need to have you escorted? Secure the hatch! Hey, Tim. Have you been topside? A ship's appeared and means to board us. It's strange. There's no sign of mutiny aboard. It doesn't make sense. Ah, but it does. What do you mean? Did you think you could escape from London so easily after what you did at the Opera? That we wouldn't notice? That we wouldn't follow? Ah. Oh. So that's what this is about. Surrender, and I will see that you are treated with honor. If you wish to treat me with honor, give me a sword. Are you sure this is how you want to play it? Stay below decks. I did as you asked. Only Mills was there waiting for me. He's the one that drew that ship here. There was no mutiny. Only him. What do they want? Me. Then they can have you. Is that so? You'll catch us anyway. There's nothing to be done. I can think of something. You wish us to sail into the storm? It's our only chance. I won't do it. All right, all right. We need those ropes secured! I told you this was bad. Calm yourself. I'll fix your sail for you.
Loose the sails! Hate them! You take the foremast! James, to the main Aye. mast with you! Aye. Make ready for our arrival, men! Arrival? I see no land, only this interminable fog. The gulls tell us all we need to know. Climb into the crow's nest and you'll see. Master Kenway! Master Kenway! Yes, may I help you? Charles Lee, sir. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. I've been asked to introduce you to the city, help you settle it. Oh, no need, sir. I've arranged for your bags to be delivered to the inn. Are you by any chance John and Isabella's son? One and the same. Your commission is with Edward Braddock, is it not? Aye. But he's yet to reach America, and I figured I might... Well... At least until he arrives, I thought... Yes? Out with it? Forgive me, sir. I had... I had yes, hoped that sir. I might study under you. If I am to serve the Order, I can imagine no better mentor than yourself. Bloody hell! Kind of you to say, but I think you overestimate me. 
Impossible, Please. sir. This Someone way. Stop him. Boston's quite a lively city. There's all manner of things to see and do. Once you've settled in, I suggest you take some time to walk the streets. Who knows what opportunities you might discover. Hold a moment. I need to fetch a few things before we get to work. I'll arrange for horses while you do that. This accursed city will be the death of me. You seem troubled, friend. That's because I am. Greatly so, in fact. What's happened? I was robbed. The old Balkan file. Though I've managed to restore what's mine, I fear it's ruined. You mean the book? This is no ordinary book. It's an almanac. The first I ever wrote. <clears throat> Benjamin Franklin, pleased to meet you. Hatham Kenway. You must be new to Boston. Why do you say that? You're still possessed of virtue. <laughs> to stop and help an old lout like myself. I... I don't mean to impose, but you seem a spry fellow. Should you happen to find my missing pages, I'll reward you. Look, I'm not sure if I... It's all right, all right. If you have the time, hurrah! If not, no harm done. The thing is useless in its current state anyway. But should you somehow manage to restore it, you'll find me inside that general store over there. Well, that was interesting. News from France. The French political thinker and writer, the Baron de Montesquieu, has... Good day, sir. Yeah, come in. We ride for the Green Dragon Tavern. The proprietors are eccentric, but the rooms are spacious and they do not cry. Have you been told why it is I've come to Boston? No. Master Birch said I should know only as much as you saw fit to share. He sent me a list of names and bade me ensure you could find them. And have you had any luck with that? Aye. William Johnson waits for us at the Green Dragon. How well do you know him? Not well. But he saw the order's mark and did not hesitate to come. Prove yourself loyal to our cause. And you may yet know our plans as well. I should like nothing more, sir. A lying, cheating, no good son of a bitch. Perhaps we've come at a bad time. Oh, don't be foolish, dearies. Please, sit. Fancy something to eat? A drink, perhaps? Or is it a bed you require? We've already let rooms here. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, of course. Masters Lee and Kenway, uh, was it? Uh, I'll have your bags brought up. Uh, 
Do you require anything further? Only privacy. This way. Sir, William Johnson. A pleasure. A good lad, if a bit earnest. I'm told you're putting together an expedition. We believe there's a precursor site in the region. I require your knowledge of the land and its people to find it. Sadly, my research has been stolen. Without it, I'm of no use to you. Then we'll find it. Do you have any leads? My associate, Thomas Hickey, has been making the rounds. He's quite good at loosening tongues. Well, tell me where I can find him. I'll see if I can't speed things up. We've heard rumors of bandits operating from a compound southwest of here. You'll likely find him there. Charles? Sir. We'd best be off. Of course. Tell me about yourself, William. What's to tell? I was born in Ireland to Catholic parents, which I learned early in life severely limited my opportunities. So I converted to Protestantism and journeyed here at the behest of my uncle. But I fear my uncle Peter was not the swiftest of men. He sought to open trade with the Kanyan Gahaga, but chose to build his settlement away from the trade routes instead of on them. I tried to reason with the man, but... <sighs> As I said, not the swiftest. So, I took what little money I'd earned and bought my own little plot of land. I built a home, a farm, a store, and a mill. Humble beginnings, but well situated, which made all the difference. So this is how you came to know the Mohawk? Indeed, and it has proved a valuable relationship. With still no mention from your contacts of the Precursor site? No hidden temple or ancient constructs? Yes and no. Which is to say, they had their fair share of sacred sites. Earthen moons, forest clearings, hidden caves, but nothing matching what you describe. No strange metals, no odd glows. Hmm. It is well hidden. Even to them, it seems. But cheer up, my friend. You'll have your precursor treasure. I swear it. To our success, then. And soon. Should not be much longer. Thomas Hickey? Who's asking? Haytham Kenway. Is that supposed to mean something? Show some respect, boy. Peace, Charles. William Johnson sent us in the hopes we might expedite your search. We don't need no expediting. Don't need none of your fancy London speak, neither. I found the men that done the theft. Then why are you just lazing around? Figuring out how to deal with those varlets. I have an idea. Well, let's hear it. I'll kill the lookout, take up a position behind the guards. Uh, you two approach from the front. When I open fire on the group, you charge in. We'll have the element of surprise on our side. Half will fall before they've even realized what's happened. Get into position. But wait for me to take the first shot.
much for the element of surprise. inside what now we can blow the door with those go on shoot them <laughs> on with your show then guess they wasn't so safe inside after all Lay down your weapons, and I'll consider letting you live. I make you the same offer. We've no quarrel. I only wish to return this chest to its rightful owner. Nothing rightful about Mr. Johnson. I won't ask again. Agreed. Your kind has no need for books and maps. Who put you up to this? Never seen a person. It's always been dead drops and letters. But they always pay, so we do the jobs. Well, those days are done. Tell your masters I said as much. <laughs> Who should I say you are? You don't. They'll know. Atham, this one's got some shot on him. You might want to be grabbing it on account of your pistol being parched. Back to the Green Dragon, then. I need a drink. Don't let go of the chest, Charles. We'll take care of this rabbit. to have loot on them it would be a shame to let it all go to waste are you mad in case you've forgotten we're in the midst of something oh why is you always got to go and spoil the sport with knives, they ain't so tough. It's not the scoundrels I'm concerned with.
Oi! Mr. Johnson's gonna need to double my pay after all this if he expects me to keep at his side. There you are. My thanks, Master Kenway. No. Tell me what it is you need. The images on this amulet, are they familiar to you? Perhaps one of the tribes has shown you something similar. It appears Kanyan Gahaga in origin. Can you trace it to a specific location? I need to know where it came from. With my research returned, perhaps. Let me see what I can do. Thomas! What? Rent yourself a room. And a bath as well. I suspect we'll be here for a while. I'll let you know as soon as I have something. Any news? Whispers of things. Nothing solid at the moment. I know you're looking for word of anything out of the ordinary. Dealing with temples and spirits and ancient times and whatnot. But, so far, can't say my boys have heard much. No trinkets or artifacts being moved through your... shadow market? Nothing new. Couple of ill-gotten weapons, some jewelry likely lifted from a living thing. But you said to listen for talk of glows and ums and strange sights, right? And I ain't heard nothing about that. Keep at it. Oh, I will. You done me a great service, mister. And I fully intend to repay my debt, thricefold if it pleases. Thank you, Thomas. Place to sleep and meal to eat is thanks enough. Don't you worry, I'll get you sorted soon. I hope you're right, Haytham. When I know something, you'll know something. Evening, gentlemen. Charming. Oh, peace, Charles. He'll grow on you. Oi! Catherine, you fussock! Get back here! Daddy needs a drink. How fares the search? Maths and maps are not cutting it. What of your local contacts? We'll need to earn their trust before they'll share what they know. <clears throat> oh, I have an idea on how we might be affecting that. There's a man who's taken to enslaving natives. Rescue them, and they'll owe us. <laughs> Do you know where they're being held? Afraid not. Benjamin Churchwill. He's a finder and a fixer. He's also on your list. And there I was, wondering whom I might solicit next. Well done. Do you like it here, Charles? There's a certain charm to Boston, I suppose. To all of the colonies, really. Granted, their cities have none of London's sophistication or splendor, but the people are earnest and hardworking. They've a pioneer spirit I find compelling. It's quite something, really, watching a place that's finally found its feet. Has it, though? The French still wage war from up north, and I fear the Spanish have designs upon this place as well. Is this a new world, or just another battlefield? Ah, that's a story old as time itself, and one that's not like to change. We're cruel and desperate creatures, set in our conquering ways. The Saxons and the Franks, the Ottomans and Safavids. 
I could go on for hours. The whole of human history is but a series of conflicts and subjugations. A desire for more and more and more. I pray one day we rise above it. Whilst you pray, I'll act. We'll see who finds success first, hmm? It was an expression. Aye, and a dangerous one. Words have power. Wield them wisely. I've some work I should finish. Let us speak later. This business with Silas confuses me. If Britain stands any chance of pushing back the French, they must ally with the natives, not enslave them. Silas is loyal only to his purse. That his actions harm the crown is irrelevant. So long as there are buyers for his product, he'll continue to procure it. All the more reason to stop him, then. My days are spent in Congress with the locals, attempting to convince them that we're the ones they should trust, that the French are merely using them as tools to be abandoned once they've won. Your words must lose their strength when held against the reality of Silas' actions. I've tried to explain that he does not represent us, but he wears the red coat. He commands a fort. I must appear to them either a liar or a fool. Likely both. Take heart, brother. When we deliver them his head, they'll know your words were true. Sorry, sir. I'm a bit busy at the moment. Wonderful. Charles? Sir? Seems like we're not the only ones looking for Mr. Church. Damn it, he could be anywhere. What do we do? We find him. Show you how. shameful display. Benjamin's parents would be mortified. Perhaps I should send someone to retrieve him before he damages his reputation beyond repair. They stumbled off to the northeast, no doubt in search of a tavern or some other place of ill repute. Start questioning those on the street. I'm headed for higher ground.
Learn to take a listen. With luck, one of those people knows what became of Benjamin. It is reported that Lieutenant Colonel Washington has surrendered for necessity. But one way or another, the debt would be settled. I don't envy the man. He's grim times ahead. Well, what do you think they're planning? All I know is it can't be good. Probably looking for a nice, quiet place to do the deed. From what I hear tell, his work usually involves quite a bit of screaming. Which reminds me, we'd best not buy any meat tomorrow. <laughs> good call, that. Them and I'll not deign to grovel. Actions speak louder than words, my friend. Arrest one and put him in stocks. See if he's so glib then. To do so without cause will set them singing songs about us. Last thing the city needs is town criers complaining about our abuse of authority. And forget it. The crime is done. The killer's gone. Those who know won't share their secrets. If the city wishes to harbor scoundrels, let them pay the price for it. say what had happened? No. Only that it was a trifling matter, and he'd be returned home soon. There was some blood, though, so I wonder if it wasn't more serious than they let on. Where were they taking him? Towards the hilltop. Perhaps there's a doctor at the fort. See, Charles? We'll have church in no time. Just as I said we would. If I might ask, sir, where did you learn to do all this? It is a requirement when you are raised in the manner that I was. Perception is fundamental to the order. It guides the feet when running and climbing, informs the hands when striking and fighting. But most important, it transforms the senses, and we begin to know the world in a different way. Careful. The place is well guarded. We need to slip past them. Find the key. Wait here.
are then. Why must you always make these things so difficult, Benjamin? Merely provide me with recompense, and all shall be forgiven. I'll not pay for protection I don't need. Clearly, you do require protection. Else we wouldn't be here. How very gutch. Now, what shall we do about our guest? Maybe. I'll take his hands. Put an end to his surgery. Maybe. I'll take his tongue. Put an end to his waggling. Or maybe... I'll take his cock. Put an end to his fucking us. So many options. I can't possibly decide. Take all three. No, no. hold a moment. Perhaps I was... Hasty in refusing you earlier. I'm so very sorry, Benjamin. But that door has closed. Be reasonable, Silas! I rather think I was. But you took advantage of my no. generosity. I won't be made a fool a second time. <sighs> I fear I lack the constitution to bear witness to such barbarism. Come find me when you're finished, Cutter. You'll regret this, Silas! Do you hear me? I'll have your head! No. I rather think you won't. <clears throat> Still a minute. I can't decide where to start. You're a ruffian. Commoner's dirt, Cutter. And proud of it. Maybe you'll get lucky and pass out. Though I dare say I'll do me best to ensure... Who are you? Haytham Kenway, at your service. I... I don't understand. Why are you here? Uh, walk with me, Mr. Church, and all will be explained. Johnson's told me what you intend. As it happens, the man who held me is the same one that you seek. His name is Silas Thatcher. That fancy lad is our slaver. Don't let his velvet tongue deceive you. A crueler and more vicious creature I've never known. What can you tell me of his operation? He hosts at least a hundred men, more than half of whom are redcoats. All this for some slaves? <laughs> Hardly. The man's a commander in the King's troop, in charge of the Southgate Fort. We need to find a way inside. Hmm, let me think on it. In the meantime, I'll attend to our final recruit. John Pitcairn's our man. I'll take you to him. State your business new recruit. More kindling for the pyre, eh? Well, go on, then. How'd you manage that? Did you forget, sir? My commission is with General Braddock. When I'm not attending to you, of course. You fool! Your acts are treacherous. Give me one good reason. I shouldn't kill you right now. Were you planning to announce yourself? Or did you hope my men Sir, wouldn't notice your arrival? you'll allow me to explain. Ho <laughs> ho! By all means. 
I should like very much to hear this. I have not deserted, sir. I am here under Commander Amherst's orders. Show me a letter bearing his seal, and you might be spared the gallows. I have no such thing. The nature of my work, sir, it's... It's the sort of thing best not put to paper. Hey, them. General Braddock? I suppose I shouldn't be surprised. Wolves often travel in packs. Master Pitcairn won't be here for but a few weeks. I shall return him to his proper post once our work is finished. The devil's work, no doubt. It's bad enough my superiors have insisted. I grant you use of Charles. But they've said nothing about this traitor. You'll not have him. Edward, listen to reason. We're done here. See these gentlemen out. Well, that didn't go as I expected. And to think I used to call him brother. What now? Well, they'll chase us off if we try and return. We're done with this camp. And as luck would have it, so are they. Come along. What are you planning? To steal Master Pitcairn. What? You'll see. Now, when I give the signal, you're to distract Braddock's patrol and lure them into a dead end. Ship's free. Yes. Those fresh arrived are often soon in dire straits. They're more likely to seize upon an opportunity to fatten their purses. And the Boston Country Journal. Scoundrels, one and all! Fire on you and your false war! <laughs> After him! <laughs> Unhand him, Edward. You again. Let us go. And John Pitcairn with us. <laughs> I will not have my authority challenged. Nor I. Put them all in chains. Join them on their fool's errand. And when you find yourself lying... I assume broken, you've good reason for causing all this madness. What is it you require of me? I'll explain everything on the way.
If I may, I was curious about your past with Braddock. You two clearly have a history. Edward was one of us upon a time, and I considered him a close friend. He was brave and bold in ways few men are. But everything changed at the siege of Bergen op Zoom. We had lost the fortress to the French, and were in the midst of egress. There was a skiff hidden at the port with which we planned to make our escape. As we drew near, a young man and his family came upon us, begging for safe passage. I consented, but Edward refused. The young man called him Craven then. So Edward killed him and all the rest, even the children. To this day, I don't know why. Was this the first time he'd struck out? Or had I simply never seen it before? Either way, things were never the same after that. We campaigned together a few more times, but each outing was more disturbing than the last. He killed and killed. Enemy or ally, civilian or soldier, guilty or innocent. It mattered not. If he perceived one to be an obstacle, they died. He maintained that violence was a more efficient solution. It became his mantra. And it broke my heart. I had no idea. He hides it well, and intimidates into silence any who discover him. Those who persist have a tendency to find... misfortune. And we should stop him. I suppose you're right. But I maintain a foolish hope that he might yet be saved and brought back round to reason. I know, I know. It's a silly thing to believe that one so drenched in death might suddenly change. I'm sorry to have brought us up. It was not my intent to sour you. Nonsense. We are brothers now. There should be no secrets between us. I hope you and the General find a way to patch things up. So, a question for you. Why medicine? I'm supposed to tell you I care for my fellow man, right? That I chose this path because it allows me to accomplish the greater good. Are these things not true? Perhaps. But that's not what guided me, no. For me, it was a less abstract. I like money. There are other paths to fortune. Uh, but what better where to peddle than life? Nothing else is as precious nor so desperately craved. And no price is too great for the man or woman who fears an abrupt and permanent end. Your words are cruel, Benjamin. But true, as well. You took an oath to help people, did you not? I abide the oath which makes no mention of price. I merely require compensation, fair compensation, for my services. And if they lack the required funds? Then there are others who will serve them. Does a baker grant free bread to a beggar? Does the tailor offer a dress to the woman who cannot afford to pay? No. Why should I? You said it yourself. Nothing is more precious than life. Indeed. Well, the more reason one should ensure they have the means to preserve it. I have some ledgers to review. Do you mind if we speak later? Don't let me keep you, sir. I'm sure you have more important things to do. Gentlemen, I believe I found the solution to our problem. Or rather, Odysseus has. How do you? Are you a new guy? The Greek hero, you lobcock. Allow me to explain. We enter Silas' fort under the pretext of kinship. Once inside, we spring our trap, free the captives, and kill the slaver. 
<laughs> dodgy, dodgy. I like it. Then, let us begin. First, we need to find ourselves a convoy. Convoy should be here soon. We'll attack on my signal. Understood, sir. If we time this right, we can catch them all unawares. Hear ye! My royal <laughs> Williams serve as vanguard. Let no man reach us. What about me? You and John will follow from a distance and keep watch over us. I'll signal you when I have need of your services. We're here to help you, along with those held inside Southgate Fort. Free me. Not until we're inside the gate. I can't chance an inspection of the gate going wrong. I'll see you safe. You have my word. Do you know anything of Silas' operation? How many men we might expect? The nature of their defenses? You must be rather important to him if you were given your own escort. Sir, we've enemies ahead. Shall I engage them? No. Let Jonathan and Thomas take care of it. As you wish. I wish you'd trust us, though I suppose it's only natural for you to be wary. So be it. Engage the enemy! Say the word, and I'll cut them down. One moment, then. Me and you. Who's your officer? Engage the enemy!
All clear. Good evening, gentlemen. State your business. Delivery for Silas. Go on, then. See? I'm freeing you just as I said I would. Now, if you'll allow me to explain... Let her go. But she'll give us away. No, she won't. What's the plan? Free the captives and avoid detection. What of Silas? He dies. I know when you're ready to strike. we got there. What are you talking about? Prisoners. Stop slouching, soldier. Big Prisoners? I said stop there slouching. There are no prisoners. Who are you to tell me what to do? A good friend of the They do not like this. change of pace from the campaigning back home. Why do you think so many of us volunteered? Good pay, safe work, a chance to own some land. French would be an end to that. I don't know. They seem content with the war. Sometimes I wonder if we'll we will know we will our sorties and expeditions. Ha! That's exactly what they want you to do.
An hour of quiet was all I asked. Instead, I'm awakened not ten minutes later by this cacophonous madness. I expect an explanation, and it had best be good. How? How did this happen? My precious merchandise set free! It's unacceptable! Rest assured, I'll have the heads of those responsible. But first, first we clean up this mess! Seal the fort, kill any who try to escape. I don't care if they be one of us or one of them. To approach the gate is to be made a corpse. Am I understood? Push them back! Go on, Hatham! We'll go back to the Did you receive any training? For the order! I could use some help. Kill him! Who are you? Name's Hatham Kenway. You don't know me, but I believe the two of you are well acquainted. I made a promise to you, Cyrus. One I intend to keep. What happens now? We wait. But not for very long, I suspect. It's been several weeks now since we freed the Mohawk prisoners from captivity. I had hoped their leader might make contact, but there's been only silence. My men grow restless. They want to know what comes next, and I do not have an answer. Lee alone remains active, pursuing leads however slight. He stalks the city streets and scouts the bordering woods, hopeful that he might make contact with one of those we saved. There was a woman there that night. It was she who helped the others to safety. If we can find her, I believe I'll have my answers. So, I watch and wait, hopeful that my true mission might finally begin.
Lord Charles. Any luck finding a mystery woman? Word is she's been stirring up trouble just outside the city in a town called Lexington. Well, then that's where we'll begin our search. I'll meet you there. Have you found her? Uh, she's made camp not too far from here. Excellent. Well, the sooner we're done, the sooner we can get out of this cold. I am afraid I have some bad news, sir. Oh? Braddock is insisting I return to service under him. I've tried to beg off to no avail. No doubt he's still angry about losing Pitcairn. To say nothing of the shaming we gave him. Do as he asks. In the meantime, I'll work on having you released. I'm sorry for the trouble. Not your fault.
We're too late. Fire's only just been snuffed. Snow recently disturbed. She's close. Olex. The tracks are fresh. It must be hers. Mm. Seems she took to higher ground. Out of the snow and into the trees. Turn to Braddock, Charles, before he grows suspicious. I can handle things from here. But, sir! But nothing! Go! Stop running! I only wish to talk! I am not your enemy! Please just hear me out! God's woman! Only let me speak! Woman! Are you touched in the head? Me? Hate them. I come in peace. Why are you speaking so slow? <sighs> Sorry. What do you want? Well, your name, for one. I'm Gadzid Zio. Well, pleased to meet you. God, God's day. Just call me Zio. Dio. Zio. Dio. Now tell me why it is you're here. Where did you get this? From an old friend. I've only seen such markings in one other place. Where? Well, it is forbidden for me to speak of it. I saved your people. Does this mean nothing to you? Look, I am not the enemy. Close to here, there is a hill. Meet me there, and we'll see if you speak the truth. That town hosts soldiers who seek to drive my people from these lands. They're led by a man known as the Bulldog. Edward Braddock. You know him? He is no friend of mine. Every day, more of my people are lost to men like him. Then I suggest we put a stop to it. Together. What do you propose? That we kill Edward Braddock. First, we have to find him. I don't trust you. I know. Yet you remain. If 
that I might prove you wrong. It will not happen. So you say. Wait here. A Mohawkman is likely to raise suspicions, if not muskets. This is hardly the first time I've been amongst your people. I can handle myself. I hope so. Can't stand being quartered there. The endless crashing of the waves. The sting of the salt in the eyes. And the goddamn gulls shrieking and shitting everywhere. You're sure that's where we're going? Aye. The Bulldog's putting together another expedition. That's what they're calling them now. Expeditions. Aye. Smart too. Slap a fancy name on something and all evil is excused. I hear tell the French are ready to move on our positions. Wonder what Braddock intends to do about it. He's already left for the advance camp. I'll wager our little holiday here is just about ended. We'll be marching south before weeks end. Where are you going, Cully? Me? No, the other cock robin. Well, I, uh, I was leaving. Oh? And now? Well, now... I'm going to feed you your teeth. And you were worried I was going to be the problem? Stop the bleeding. That wasn't necessary. But thank you. We should move on. Meet me at Braddock's camp when you're ready.
Use the snowstorm to mask your approach. Having second thoughts? Hardly. But I'll have to approach this carefully. Go on then. I'll keep watch from here. Hmm. I can hide in that cart. What's in the wagon? I need a full inventory. As you wish. Uh, let's see. Two barrels of salt, 12 pounds pork, 10 pounds of beef, 7 dozen eggs, 16 wheels of cheese. None of it French, don't worry. Five bottles of whiskey, a couple dozen new uniforms, boots, a leather for patching, blankets to cart feed for the horses. What else? That's it. That's all there is. Those cannons are like to cause trouble. Perhaps I could sabotage them. solution was no solution at all. That allowing the French to retreat would only delay an inevitable conflict. One in which they'd now have the upper hand. There's merit to those words. As much as I hate to admit it. Still, can't he see this is unwise? It doesn't sit well with me either. We're far from home with our forces divided. Worse, I fear Braddock's bloodlust makes him careless. It puts them at a risk. I'd rather not be delivering grim news to mothers and widows because the bulldog wanted to prove a point. Where is the general now? Rallying the troops. And then it's on to Fort Duquesne, I assume? Eventually. The march north will surely take time. There's a copy of the plans in the command tent should you wish to review them. At least this will be ended soon. I try, John. I know, my friend. I know. That map will surely be of use. I need to find it.
What news? Braddock has left to rally his troops. They're marching on Fort Duquesne. It'll be a while yet till they're ready, which gives us time to form a plan. No need. We will ambush them here near the river. Go and gather your allies. I will do the same. I will send word when it is time to strike. the cold, cold ground. Here, here. Hard at work, I see. How did you... <laughs> it is time. We've set up camp to the north. Meet me there. Gentlemen. Let us away. First it was too cold, now it's too goddamn hot. And humid too, as I ain't swamp, I tell you. Uh, to say nothing of the mosquitoes. Warm weather and bugs are soon to be the least of our worries. What? You mean the bulldog? Huh. Please, we'll be in that one's beef soon enough and on to the next. Where's your boy Lee gone off to? Returned to finish out his service under Braddock. I imagine the Bulldog's none too pleased after the stunt we pulled. Pleased to spin a tale of my incompetence and beg forgiveness. He is away with words, especially when it comes to flattery. I expect he'll be welcomed back with open arms. Which would give us a man inside. Precisely. Unless you've underestimated our enemy. If I have, Charles will sense it first and make his escape. He's more clever than you think. I see you've been busy. All these men are from many different tribes, united in their desire to see Braddock sent away. The Abenaki, the Lenape, the Shawnee. And you? Who do you stand for? Myself. What would you have me do? Will you help the others to prepare? Follow. They come. Everything all right, sir? Just savoring the moment. No doubt, many wonder why it is we've pushed so far west. 
These are wild lands as yet untamed and unsettled. But it shall not always be so. In time, our holdings will no longer suffice. And that day is closer than you think. We must ensure our people have ample room to grow and further prosper. Which means we need more land. The French understand this and endeavor to prevent such growth. They skirt around our territory, erecting forts and forging alliances, awaiting the day they might strangle us with the noose they've built. This must not come to pass. We must sever the cord and send them back. This is why we ride, to offer them one last chance. The French will leave, or they will die. Now is the time to strike. Wait. To scatter the expedition is not enough. We must ensure that Braddock falls. I'll see sure to try again. I'll disguise myself as one of his own and make my way to his side. Your ambush will provide the perfect cover for me to deliver the killing blow. Anyone call this forest home? With the French so push back, there'll be a lot of opportunities for us up north. Have served, you mean. Sir? You are grateful to ha- Edward. Not so fun on the other end of the barrel, is it? Where are you off to, Edward?
I never took you for a coward, Edward. Come on, then! Such arrogance. I always knew it would be the end of you. Is the end of you. Don't. Hurry before he gets away. I said go! I don't deserve this! You're a hypocrite, Atham! I'm sorry, Edward, but you forced my hand! Death opens a door. It's nothing personal. Well, maybe it is a little personal. Been a pain in my ass after all. But we are brothers in arms. Once, perhaps. No longer. Do you think I've forgotten what you did? All those innocents slaughtered. And for what? It does not engender peace to cut your way to resolution. Wrong. Whether we applied the sword more liberally and more often, the world would be a better place than it is today. In this instance, I concur. Farewell, Edward. Done. Now I have upheld my part of the bargain. I expect that you will honor yours. Follow me. You seem disappointed. I thought that I held a key that would open something here. This room is all there is. I expected more. What do they mean? It tells the story of your Zizu came into their world and shaped it for what life might come. She had a hard journey, fraught with great loss and peril. But she believed in her children and what they might achieve. And though she has long gone from the physical world, her eyes still watch over us. Her ears still hear our words. Her hands still guide us. And her love still gives us strength. You have shown me great kindness, dear. Thank you. I... I should go. Master Kenway, did you find it then? It 
was not the right place. The others are waiting for you. Gentlemen, please sit. I fear our temple was no more than a painted cave. Although it did contain precursor images and script, which means we are close. Not close enough, it seems. We need to redouble our efforts and expand our order and establish a permanent base here. Although the site eludes us, I am confident we will find it. Truth. Here, here. Furthermore, I believe it is time we welcome Charles into our fold. He has proven himself a loyal disciple and served unerringly since the day he came to us. He should be able to share in our knowledge and reap all the benefits that such a gift implies. Are any opposed? Very well. Charles, come, stand. Do you swear to uphold the principles of our order and all that for which we stand? I do. And never to share our secrets nor divulge the true nature of our work? I do. And to do so from now until death, whatever the cost? I do. Then we welcome you into our fold, brother. Together, we will usher in the dawn of a new world, one defined by purpose and order. Give me your hand. You are a Templar. May the Father of Understanding guide us. May the, May the Father of Understanding, of understanding guide, guide, us. guide us. Wait, what? You all saw that, right? Wow. Wow, indeed. The key must be the amulet Haytham took from London. We might know what it looks like, but we're no closer to finding it. Desmond, you need to keep going. Hey, he's your ancestor, too. Why don't you hop in the Animus? Really? That's your response? It's like dealing with a six-year-old. What is wrong with you, Desmond? You want to know what's wrong? I'm sick of being treated like I'm not even here. Desmond, do this. Desmond, do that. Desmond, you better figure things out because the sun is going to turn us all to ash. And I know I was really nice to you, but actually I'm just another Templar plot twist. And yes, I would like very much for you to be controlled by a magic space wizard so that you can murder me. So there's your answer. I'm sick of being a goddamn pawn. I thought it might be different with you. I mean, you're my father, but turns out you're no better than the fucking Templars. <clears throat> Don't you ever equate me to those bastards again. You hear me? Everything I do, everything I have done, has been for you. Maybe I pushed a little too hard, asked a little too much, but try and remember exactly what's at stake here. You need to get it together, kid. Running out of right. time. Right, was unusual. Well, I'm just going to pretend that this never happened and get back to bringing everyone up to speed on where we stand. The news isn't good. It appears this temple is powered by a collection of, um, well, I guess they're batteries. You found one on your way in, but there aren't any more, at least not down here. Any idea on where we can find replacements? Not yet, so I intend to tiptoe into the Abstergo database. Now, if I can cross-reference these particular devices with their database, then maybe we'll get lucky. See what you can do. Obviously. Anyway, Desmond, we can either take a look around here or we can head back to the Animus. What are you working on? Lots of different stuff. If you're going into the field, we need a way to keep tabs on you and stay in touch. Hacking into local security systems won't cut it. Thanks. For what? I don't know. Everything. 
You've sacrificed a lot for me, you and Sean both. I mean, you upgraded the Animus, you helped train me, pulled me out of that coma. You put all that work into the database and helped me solve Clay's puzzles. I know I haven't been the easiest person to work with, and I'm sorry for that. I just want you to know that even if I'm shitty at showing it, I appreciate everything you've done. You really think we'll finally get some answers down here? Maybe. Talking to the first Civ has always been a pain in the ass, though. Imagine what it must be like for them. What do you mean? They've been separated from us by tens of thousands of years. A completely different language and culture. Possessed of an intelligence vastly superior to our own. We're lucky they've communicated as much as they have. I don't know why they had to make this all so complicated. I mean, if they need something from me, they should just come out and say it. I've been wondering about that myself. I get the sense Juno and Minerva didn't exactly see eye to eye. I'm studying everything I can get my hands on, but maybe you'll find something down here that can shed light on the mystery. What happened between them, and why? What do you think's behind that door? No idea. Do you think it can save us? The first Civ seemed to think so. What if it's dangerous? It's not like we have a lot of alternatives. Well, we could... I don't know, warn the President? And what's he gonna do? Who's to say he isn't in bed with Abstergo? Seems everyone is these days. What if we went to them? To Abstergo, I mean. I thought about it, actually. Showing them what we've seen, trying to work together. They must know so much more than we do, but... What is it? It's possible they know exactly what's going to happen. That they want it to happen. I mean, for all we know, they're hiding out in bunkers right now, waiting for the world to end. And then, when it's all over, out they come. Ready to take control. God, I hope you're wrong. So do I, Rebecca. So do I. Alright, I should be getting back to work. Sorry, Desmond. Little busy right now. Let's talk later. Yes. Just thought I'd, you know, say hi. You have more important things to do right now. Jesus, Dad. What? What do you want me to say? I don't know. Hi, son. How are you? What have you been up to? I know what you've been up to. Nothing. You wasted away in some shitty apartment with a pointless job, while the rest of us were out there fighting to make a difference. <sighs> you are such an asshole. Are you thinking about hitting me again? Because this time, I will hit back. Let's just get back to work, okay? Stop wasting time. Would you look at that? What is it? If I had to guess, I would say it's a counter. And judging from the iconography, I think it's safe to say, when that's emptied, the end begins. Hello, Desmond. How's things? Same old. Another day, another ancestor. Who'd have thought you'd have a Templar in your family tree? I think he started out as an assassin. They must have turned him. Right you are, in fact. I've been reviewing our archives, and it appears that Haytham's father was indeed an assassin. Which means he was likely one too, at least for a little while. What else did you find? That fellow from the opera, Reginald Birch, Grand Master of the London Chapter of Templars. He and Haytham's father, a man named Edward, well, they were long-time rivals. Now, it appears Birch got his hands on Haytham at a rather young age. Worked his wiles to convince Haytham to switch sides. Wonder how he did it. I'll see if I can't dig up more. Hon honest answer, please, Desmond. Do you think we're getting out of this alive? I don't know. I mean, it's a pretty tall order. If the first Civ couldn't save the world, how the hell are we supposed to swing it? We have some time. We have less than two months. They had decades and a lot more resources. And the worst part is we knew this was coming for, what, hundreds of years? History repeats, it seems. The first Civ was so busy with their war against us, no one even noticed what was happening. 
We get advance warning and then fall to fighting with the Templars. Lovely. Hopefully, whatever's behind that door will make a difference. And if it doesn't? Well, at least we tried. Back to work I go. You should consider doing the same. I'm working right now. All the visual clues are here, which means no time for chit-chat, okay? Sorry. All right, here goes. Undan nizero heads done you. A wira a wa unte yard on jadagu. Tone were the nagara de. This a jerra nero niha. Next the yate huaya than a kerra. As a gante a jerra oni. Next the ya o tena de gari wastaque. A gungwe that soon a wahuan nor dunque zi neot nesa go de ogunga. Ze wa jerra sri at dizaks ne hatham. Raganerum quaque unte zinito guenu. Next the ohondo yo ha witum yat de haganeraque. Zinuer o joqua templar a guego tadinya rodar hooks. Ne on ha at gets on is. The got get soon a rion a higunsa gandanu a got gato di ne saga rascanex. One day, star. Hmm. Oni Ya otena guanek. Guanek. Raduna gedu. Te wat kiri chiro niana. Raduna jo gedu na deratiu danu yako dunis. How was? Nexi dosa izi na kahanda di yahaze. Ah, 
Zorda Gohadu. Is it as a dotton? Aska Degani Ansan Gayeri. Aska Dewat Nyawe. So this is how young the Negiga. Wagu yat dat sorry. Ah! Unia di isa dari under da fe. Aye de wa zaka ni akta su ane na ha de wa kiri suri nasi. Kado gardiak. The guest of the Zewashta Datari. Wah! I had the way Zaka and Yokta soon on Nana at the Wat Kirit Sirunasi. Did the what carrots are doing? Easy, I have a yacht away. Oscar, Degany, Asa, the Yerdy, Whisk, Yayak, Zada, Sadegu, Jotu, Oyerdy. Whiskey you want it, Dignity you want it, also you want it, Beard you want it, Whiskey you want it, Yai if you want it, Yabi you want it, Sadegu you want it. What have we here? Familiar. Where have I seen you before?
That wasn't very nice. Mommy, go! <laughs> Listen to that. He knows English. It's not for a savage. He's more spirited, too! We have questions for your elders. Only tell us where your village is, boy, and you can go. Best do as he asks, child. I could snap your neck, you know. A little more pressure and pop. The sad little flame of your life extinguished. You are a nothing, a speck of dust. You and all your ilk, living in the dirt like animals, oblivious to the true ways of the world. The wiser among you recognize the shape of the future. They throw themselves at our feet and beg mercy. But not you, it seems. No. You cling desperately to your ways, too ignorant to know your folly. But I am not unkind. And so I spare you, that you may carry word to your people. Let them know the sooner we are given what we seek, the sooner you can return to your pathetic, empty lives. A fair trade, is it not? What is your name? <laughs> Charles Lee. Why do you ask? So I can find you. <laughs> I look forward to it. Isse. 
ハンゼザクチノウエヨジクンデザハガヨヤネレヨンザスカツネクティドニガリウエストナヨトハゲノナスカグイデネネトワサガヤリニハディロノウエカアタウナナダッコゲソクノナスカナナゲネタデワトナ
ま、どこ、どんどんまいてに、わらろろげたのかね。あ、ごはやのわんでてかどらつらわや。どのどすじろずじわかれそ。あんぐりほにゃ。かなだった、えぞとこでなげれんよ。とんじゃどらで。どん
Aung Zaka, kaya dah orang na. Kana dogu? Oh na awak ne. Otku. Aguahua gets hard, Nike. What's getting y'all got there? Yawa. I'm the Jatandi owner. I always see an adjunct girl who didn't go rayanda, ne? Dino Jera, ya ezo de tienam. Next yato deot. Oh, neot. Let's duck how a hungry hunya. Agadarian darerji zari huye was anujera jia karha gunche dewata anujera jia te tia jat daraniere ne o ya ganyak ke ha gadzi waterio unga wasunda de don zari huwa seragwa se yohun janorunge yungwa de na daya danu ne amha ajungwa deri wayani ne. Aye tia se tani se ge unjung hunza. Ara haja zi doga ne gandu aye tiri hun ne yung kiswas saha o di sa sta se reyanda ne. Yung gwa do raze ne to na ye dewa yer hage. Yung gwa yak do dar he un zi no ga yera ne de ye ti swa ne da. Danu ne do ga to na dewa yere yot de do a yung gwa jong ha se. Onu jera zi toni ori hawana ne ai dewa da den hodu. Ona hoda tiga. Kani hoha. Ane, greetings, guardian. Are you a spirit? You may think of me as such. Where am I? You are where you were before. If you mean to ask what it is you now see, it is known as the Nexus. From here. Probabilities are calculated so that the proper path may be chosen. What path? Yours.
Follow me. What have you done to me? Selected a form familiar to your culture. It is designed to ease navigation. We have waited millennia for your arrival. You, who will bring to him the last piece, that he may open the door. I do not understand. Nor need you. I sense my words cause pain, but such was not my intention. You are important, child, in more ways than you will ever know. As we speak, forces gather in secret, preparing to seize control of the land. If they succeed, the Sanctuary will be breached. Yours is a special lineage. Past. Present. Future. Many are connected to you. Many who have changed the world, who will change the world, so too shall you. I have called you here that you might know your duty. You must protect Sanctuary from those who would undo our work. What Sanctuary? What work? Maintaining your current force will result in a negative outcome. Premature access will destabilize the region. Your village and its people will be destroyed. What am I to do? You will learn of a man who will provide additional training. Seek this symbol. No doubt you have many questions. Time will see them answered. For now, you must follow. Leading later. Radun Hager dun got nowhere. Got nowhere ni sat got to Tigo Gari Wayerunits dun. A dun heads wagena duni. What guard of the room with Daya Jadatka? A hagena dun has a onio di akande. Hm. Da tune Tigarunogue. Easy not gahanda di tunas. Gari was si wagadari under. The no easy gi oni. A rahaja di zadetni go rizu ne dosa seri wayena. You go our harats dun ayede wa dun hundanuna. Next year, the sherry de neat knees. They ought to tell you Haja or Hunjage than Oya Tondo, a young Guada se to Hage. Yaka attacked Scordagate than Agader harder than I the what want that ne. What Gunya to Dari Sigi, or why do Erda Ossette? Oh, no Jeradi, the Zadari Wadeniani. Isaac Goya Tak Gweni, the Guri Wadeni. Yahasa Giga. I said, I did not hold as a sucks it got a quinegos. Tonu, I got got on a gari wire in its stone. Ne egi garum where a hawi or yashniena, the neo, the zatni stoha was a gosniena. Yama.
Seri Asadoga, Nekti gets Hani, so the Ezos are hard. Was says Akane Gari Huayronitsu, Satahatsori. Leaving home was harder than I thought. I expected the journey would fill me with a sort of pride, a sense of accomplishment. But whatever it was that carried me away from home soon fled, replaced by questions and no small amount of doubt. Had I been too hasty? Had I made a mistake? The others in the village, they thought this was something I wanted, something I chose to do. But it never felt that way to me. No. It was not a choice. It was an obligation. Because if not me, then who? Get out of the way! After him! Hello. Hello. You must be one of them native fellas, eh, from the, uh, what's it called? Iroquois tribe. Aye. You from that? Of course not, Terry. 
Iroquois ain't a tribe. Is so. Is not. The Iroquois is a confederation. Confederate what now? Confederation, ya Tony. It's a group, an alliance. Lots of different kinds of people, all united. Right. Like I said, a tribe. Listen, ya toddy headed twiddle poop. There's a difference between a tribe and a confederation, and it's not my fault your skull's too thick to make sense of it. Who are you calling a twiddle poop, you crump buck scab? What? Um... I... I was told you could train me. No. Go away! I'm not leaving! I need a place to camp. This should do. There must be another way in. Please, all I ask is a moment of your time. I apologize if I've been unclear or otherwise confused you with my words. It was never my intention to mislead. So let me try to clarify. Get the hell off my land! Coming up! Hear me out. What are you so afraid of? Afraid? You think I'm afraid of anything? Least of all a self-important little scab like you? Ah. Or you might dream of being a hero. 
of riding to rescues, of saving the world. But stay this course, and the only thing you're gonna be is dead. The world's moved on, boy. Best you do, too. I will not leave, do you hear me? I'm never leaving. Just wait, old man. I will not be defeated so easily. These are square toes. This will be easy. That's what you said last time, and I wound up with a dead horse and a dark eye. Who are you? No one you need concern yourself with, little britches. Best cut for something bad happens. No. Can't say we didn't warn ya. What do you want? Best to ask the boss man. Ah! You working for the old man then? That it? Maybe this will get you talking. Oh. Suppose we should talk. Sorry. Not your fault. This whole place is ready to come down. Goddamn miracle it hasn't already. Anyway, who are you? My name is Rado Hangado. Right. Well, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that. Now, tell me why you're here. I was told to seek this symbol. Do you even know what that symbol represents? Or what it is you're asking for? No. And yet, here you are. The spirit said that... that These I am... These spirits of yours have been harassing the assassins for centuries. Ever since Ezio uncorked the bottle. Uh, but you don't even know what an assassin is, do you? Well, best settled in then. I've got a story to tell, and it's gonna take a while to get it all out. And so, this is why the Assassins have dedicated themselves to the pursuit of the Templars. Because if they succeed, your spirit's visions will become reality. Then I will stop them. Oh, I have no doubt you'll try. <sighs> Come on. I've something to show you. Careful. Uh, wasn't a joke when I said this place was coming apart. Why don't you repair it? What's the point? Besides, I don't have materials for the job. So buy them. Huh. 
<laughs> Look at me. You think I can just march into some store purse full of pounds and go shopping? Yes. Why not? I'm so naive. This way. You can just come in here, throw those on, and call yourself an assassin. I, I did not. I, I would never presume... That's all right. I know they've a certain allure. Very well. I'll train you. Then we'll know if you've the right to wear those robes. Thank you. Um... Name's Achilles. Come on, then. We've work to do. You are a speck of dust, a nothing. You and all your kind, living in the dirt like animals, oblivious to the true ways of the world. What do the Templars want? What they've always wanted, control. They see an opportunity in the colonies, a chance for new beginnings, unfettered by the chaos of the past. This is why they back the British. Here they have a chance to illustrate the merits of their beliefs, a people in service to the principles of order and structure. I have seen what is to come if they succeed. They have to die, don't they? All of them. Even my father. Especially your father. He's the one holding the whole thing together. So I trained, in running, in climbing, in fighting, in falling, and for every lesson that concerned the body, there were two that concerned the mind. Language, philosophy, logic, the arts. Achilles taught most often of the assassins and Templars, their structures, origins, and purpose. Centuries of history condensed into a few short days. I told him of the men who had burned my village, of Charles Lee and my promise to him. Achilles explained that Lee and his followers were Templars, and that they were led by none other than my own father. If I was to serve the Order, these men would become my targets. So I worked harder, learned faster, but for all my progress, it was clear that I still had much to learn. My training had only just begun. Good morning. To you as well. You taking a trip? I've decided to do something about the house. And you're going to help me. Get it? This place is incredible. The people, the sounds and smells. 
I could walk these streets for days and know not even half its wonders. I thought the same as you upon a time. These days, I much prefer the quiet of the countryside. But there is so much life here. So many opportunities. For a few, my boy. For a few. There's a store close to here. You're to buy the items on this list. Tell them where the carriage is, and they'll see that it's loaded. Understood? Yes. Good. You're also going to need a new name. Your skin is fair enough that you might pass for one with uh, Spanish or Italian blood. Better to be thought a Spaniard than a native. And both are better still than I. That is not true. What's true and what is aren't always the same. What would you call me then? Kana. Yes, that will be your name. All right then, off you go. Commissioners of Customs Act. Oh, Chancellor Townsend must have thought himself so clever when he papered these thefts and made them law. But the Constitution says we've a right to refuse. That there will be no taxation without representation. Tell me, who represented us in Parliament? Who spoke on our behalf? Signed in our stead? Give me a name. You can't. And you know why? You can't tell me who represented us because nobody did. You lost? I need the items on this list. Will you be paying with coin or trade? Some of these things I have, some I don't. Lumber's hard to come by since my supplier up and vanished. I have the tools and pitch, though. Nails, too. So, uh, where do you want this delivered? Our wagon is near the state house. I should return to Achilles. Who stands in Parliament for Boston? For New York? For Virginia? No one. Everyone! Come with us! We found enough! Ragtag and Riffraff, come with me! We're headed to the customs house to toss some quips at the lobsters! What happened? That's what we're going to find out. We're going to Follow me. With me! To King Street! We'll show them! Down to the customs house for a spree! Come along! is forbidden. We're not going anywhere, bud. Oi! Why don't you go back to England? No good can come of this chaos. Return to your homes and all will be forgiven. Never. Not until you've answered for your crimes. You're right, cowards. You don't scare us. Pointing guns and unarmed. We ain't afraid. <sighs> is that my father? Yes. Which means trouble is sure to follow. I need you to tail his accomplice. This crowd is a powder kick. We can't allow him to light the fuse. But 
but nothing. Do as I say and go. Come on, you gosh gutted coward. It doesn't shoot at me. Hey, lobster, go ahead. Fire your little gun. You red back, rum soaked, bacon face melt. I just shall fight you. This on you. Fuss about fire at the townhouse. Your plot has ended. Not quite. Just a messenger. Mr. Adams wants a word. What? Why? Well, you'll need to ask him that yourself. He'll meet you tonight near Faneuil Hall. I suggest laying low to you. Over here.
You're Achilles' boy. Connor, was it? I saw what happened at the townhouse. A fine mess, that. Who are you? Samuel Adams, at your service. Achilles asked me to get you out of Boston. Explain. The whole city's looking for you. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! A criminal stalks the streets, wanted in connection with the massacre at the townhouse. Citizens are advised to call the guards if they see him. Ten pounds to whoever brings this mad What am I supposed to, to do? Well, you can take down these posters for a start. Return to me once you remove the others. We can't be seen together until these posters are gone. can say for certain who fired the first shot. But we now suspect a man of native origin. Many speculate as to why he acted. A show of solidarity with the protesters? Vengeance for an attack on his people? Or was it merely an act of madness? I fear we shall have no answers until he is in custody. So long as he still walks the streets, all of us are in danger. Ah, Connor. There you are. I'd like you to meet Cyrus. Is it... is he the killer? Peace. Cyrus is on our side, or rather, for the right price he will be. Have you seen this man? Watch and learn. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! Word has reached us that the man responsible for today's shooting may have been in disguise. A wig and makeup tin were found near the scene of the crime. Witnesses describe a middle aged gentleman of pale complexion fleeing towards the wharves, rifle in arm. Thank you kindly, Cyrus. Pleasure. Come on, then. There's still one last bit of work to do. Where are we going? To the printer. Where do you think all those posters came from? They're made by a machine. We need to shut it down.
Here we are, then. I'll see you inside. Use your lantern to light the lamps, Connor. They'll help us find our way should we get turned around. I wonder why they built these tunnels. Excellent. Let us move on. Much as it pains me to say it, we must follow the rats, as they often move in the direction of an exit. Well, well. You were right. I apologize for ever doubting. No wonder Achilles has taken such an interest in you. Ours. I don't suppose lockpicking is part of your repertoire? Well done. The printer isn't far. Let us reconvene there. You ask a great deal of me, Sam. I know. But I wouldn't be here if it wasn't important, if it wasn't vital. Fine. Just this once, though. In the future, such things will come at a price. Resetting the type is neither quick nor easy. To say nothing of the cost should I be discovered. I shall not forget this kindness. Nor I. His work will see your last little bit of notoriety erased. Come, I'll show you how to leave now that order's been restored. Oh, now you've had a chance to see how it all works. Untoward actions will upset the citizens and inevitably lead to the guards being called. Depending on the severity of your transgression, they may simply search a bit before giving up and returning to their post. But should you offend them severely or repeatedly, they'll become much more aggressive in their pursuits. I've shown you three ways to turn the tide. Remove wanted posters, bribe town criers, or visit a printer to create your own propaganda. This feels wrong. Why not just speak to someone and explain my innocence? You can't be serious. We counter one lie with another. Words on paper instantly taken as truth. And all of it without question. They loose this beast! Or have you forgotten? I merely helped you tame and turn it round. There must be another way. Something more honest. Well, when you find it, do let me know. But until then, we sculpt with the clay we have. My apologies. 
I do not mean to sound ungrateful. Quite all right. I was much the same at your age. You'll grow out of it. And if I do... Here we are. Speak with the harbor master, and he'll see you home. Thank you for everything, Sam. I promise one day to repay the favor. Oh, I'm counting on it. Like this. Welcome back. You left me in Boston. The training we've done here is all well and good, but experience is a better teacher by far. What of my father? Into the wind, I'm afraid. We have to find him. And we will, after the house has been repaired. But he's out there plotting who knows what. And what would you do when you found him, if you found him? You're a boy with a few months of training. He's a man, full-grown, who spent decades honing his skills. If you're going to stand a chance against the Templars, you're going to need these. Go on before I change my mind. Down there! He's just passed under the bridge! Someone! Help! Help me! Please! Help me! Please! Help! Help me! Please! Someone! Help! Someone! Help! Help! What this knobend is trying to say is he's forever in your debt, sir. Who are you calling? A knobend? You, because you are one. What were you doing on those logs? One of the dangers of lumbering. 
We've got the camp set up a few rods off of here as we're cutting timber. We're hoping to open a mill in the area. There's a good place not far from the manor on the hill where I'm staying. <laughs> I like you already. We'll have a look. I'll miss the peace and quiet, but we can certainly use the wood. The manor needs a lot of work. That and other things. Meet me at the small shack by the shoreline when you have time. There's something else you need to see. What is it? An asset. he held for dear. I met him once, that happened. He was seven feet tall if he was an inch. I tell ya, legs like tree trunks on it. Go away! Say, go away, boy! Do not speak the king's English? Oh, I didn't see you there, old man. I'd have set my home in order if I'd known you'd be calling. Your boy's name is Connor. He's here to restore the property. Restore? Restore? Pardon my manners. She's still the fastest in the Atlantic. Sure, she needs some attention. Minor things, mostly, but with a little affection, she'll fly again. Who is she? Who is she? Why, the Aquila boy, the ghost of the North Seas. The boat. A, a boat? She's a ship boy, and make no mistake about it. I thought you brought him here to restore order. I reckon he's the greenest thing on the frontier. Connor, meet me back at the manor when you've finished here. You said it requires repairs. You able? She does need work. A ship is a she, boy. And yes, I can refit her, but I I'm lacking in the proper supplies. Some some quality timber would help me get started. I can see to that. How long before it she is able to sail again? Just get me the lumber, boy. And I'll raise a crew.
There you are. I have something to show you. Come, take a look. What is it? A ledger. It lets us manage the homestead's dealings. And these? Uh, that was years ago. Before the slow fever, before the Templars, before everything collapsed. But that's all in the past. Better we focus on what's in front of us. Take up the ledger, and I'll teach you how it all works. Time passed quickly after that. My days a blur of study, training, and work. What little free time Achilles allowed me was spent learning about the Templars. About Charles Lee and my father. I longed to confront them. To put an end to their schemes. To ensure my people would remain untroubled and free. That to approach them now would see me killed. All my work would be for nothing. Patience, restraint. These proved the most difficult subjects for me. But in time, I mastered them as well. Days became months. Months became years. And as my skills and knowledge grew, so too did I. Come aboard and feast your eyes, boy. No, 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 not the left foot. Never the left foot. Horrible look. Step with your right foot first. She is... solid? Aye. Weatherly and sleek. She'll fetch twelve knots in a stiff gale, near a ship from here to Singapore can outrun her on her best day. What do you say we take her out? Show you what she can do first hand. Where would we go? As it happens, she still needs guns and the officers to command them. We'll launch straight away. <laughs> Don't worry, lad. I'll make sure you sprout good sea legs. All in the mainsail! Get up the rigging! Hand over fist! Come on, men! Let's get her out where she needs to be! Come on, lad, no time like the present. Double time, boy, it's time you learned. Take the helm. Come on, come on, she won't bite! You're connected to her now. Half sail! Ah! The killer flies again! Do you feel it, lad? Set a course for Martha's Vineyard. We'll find our guns and officers there. 
She's a nimble vessel, but the faster she goes, the more cumbersome she grows. And the firmer your hand needs to be. Enjoy this stretch of open water before we come upon those shallows. Call for full sail if you like. Wind looks to be shifting. Stay alert, Connor. Gusty winds can be difficult to manage. Now, take us through these shallows. Careful not to run up on them. The sandbars will slow us down, but the rocks will put a hole through a hole. And if you want to make a quick tack, call for half sail. She's more maneuverable then. Mind those other vessels! Hold your tack to keep your right of way! Cottages. We're close. Anchor. We'll go ashore, buy our guns, and find our officers. Oh, hello, Miss Mandy. You're looking every bit as ravishing as I remember. Hmm. After all these years, you sail all the way to the vineyard to pay me compliments. We are looking for David and Richard Clutterbuck. Hmm. Nice to see you, too. Robert Faulkner. Where the hell you been? Sorry for leaving like I did, lads, but where I was going, no one could know. You two working much? No. Between contracts at the moment. Well, we're looking for gunnery officers. What would you two say to working with me again? We'd be for getting into a few more scraps. <laughs> a good show. The Aquila is a fine vessel. We're fitting all the guns as we speak. Looks like your friend's about to catch a beating. Where is Charles Lee? I don't much care for your tone, boy. Hey, you don't want to be doing that, Biddle. Bobby Faulkner turned to wet nursing. 
Could you finally realize you're a shite sailor? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not in here, gentlemen. Better still, not at all. Bobby, take your friends and get out! Let's go, boys. Our guns ought to be ready. Come on. The older man is a Templar. Who was he with? A Templar? The young buck was Nicholas Biddle. Nobody. Sails before the mast. Midshipman for the Crown. Are the guns ready? Aye, but we won't jump in over our heads. We'll find a suitable target and show you how they work. We've fitted her with a modest amount of guns to start, but rest assured there's ample room to add more should you feel the need. Looks like a British frigate with half seas over. Should do nicely for a spot of target practice. Bring around broadside, and when all guns are on target, call fire. Well done, boy! Now, aim all guns at her bow and do as much damage as possible. Now give the swivel guns a turn. More precise. Hit those old powder barrels and light up the sky. Fast learner, provided something interests me. Ah, getting a taste for the open sea, are we? We'll make a jack tar out of you yet. Now we should be getting back. The old man is like to have my hide for keeping you out so long. Why is he shooting at us? Destroying property of the crown, disturbing the king's peace, take your pick! What do we do? Naught else but to fight back! Sink the bastard! Use the swivels on him, Captain! English frigate! I'll be betwattled another one. Where in the bloody hell did she come from?
Carry on, sailor. Not bad for you first, boy, J-Boy. Now we best be getting back at the old man will have my guts for garters. I got them! All of them! You get what I need, and I'll give them to you. Simple. You got a ship, could find them all to boot. Who is that man? Him? Some old salt always on about letters he's got from Captain Kidd. Nonsense, really, but he doesn't hurt no one, so I'll leave him be. Talk to him if you fancy, but be warned he'll chew your ear off. Anyway, the Aquila's here for you. If you should get a pang for the open sea, we'll be waiting. Now I implore you to head up the hill before the old man comes out of retirement just for me. Three weeks. And not even a goodbye before you left. Sorry. Well, what are you waiting for? Put them on. Once upon a time, we had a ceremony on such occasions. But I don't think either of us are really the type for that. You've your tools and training, your targets and goals. And now you have your title. Welcome to the Brotherhood, Connor. Welcome back, Desmond. You'll be happy to hear there's actually good news for once. Yeah? I've managed to locate a power source, and it's relatively close by. Up for a trip to Manhattan? Is it safe to leave? Abstergo's gotta be looking for us. Obviously it's not safe. Can't exactly sit around here hoping to get lucky, though, can we? We need that power source. Besides, I'm sure you can cook up some way to hide our movements. Maybe. The Templars have access to all kinds of satellites and camera systems. We'll need to find a way to mask our digital signature. I can probably camouflage the van, too. But there's not much I can do for us. That's an easy one. Local utility companies have assured the public that they're completely prepared for the upcoming solar maximum. Disruptions to service are expected to be minimal. <laughs> if only they knew. What's this? A remote-operated camera. It'll provide us with a feed while you're on mission. This will let us talk to each other. We're almost there, so listen up. The artifact is in an office penthouse in Lower Manhattan. At this time of night, direct infiltration is gonna get you noticed. I think we're better off having you drop in from above. What do you mean, above? Testing, one, two, three. Yep, reach you just fine. Now why don't you power up the camera? I've got pictures, running diagnostics. Perfect, I've got a nice strong signal.
Seriously, Sean? Fuck you. Jesus. Look on the bright side. No security to worry about. And on the not so bright side, the slightest misstep means you're effectively at the taste. Shut up, Sean. Almost there, Desmond. Once you reach the top of the lit up crane, you should be high enough to make the jump. Should? It'll be fine, don't worry. Well, you might want to worry a little. I'm pretty sure she was high when she was running the numbers. Sean! A joke. It was a joke. Or was it? That wasn't so bad. So, you must be Desmond. Not exactly what I expected, but I guess your kind doesn't have many options these days. Who are you? Ask your father. Now give me that. I don't think so. Look, I'm not supposed to kill you, but the boss man didn't say anything about fucking you up. So you got to the count. So who the hell is Daniel Cross? Believe it or not, he used to be an assassin. The assassin, the way I've heard it told, but it turned out he was a sleeper agent for Abstergo, programmed to infiltrate and destroy the organization. How did he know you were there? We could be compromised. They must have caught me snooping inside their network and sent Cross to see what we were after. If they were aware of our current location, we'd know. Though, I will say this, it doesn't bode very well for future expeditions. I've set up some cameras topside. If anyone shows up, we'll see it. I'd suggest you go see about finding a socket for that power source. Or we can return to Connor if you prefer. All the artifacts in the world won't mean a thing without the key.
beginning, when we thought we could be saved, we sought to face the sun's wrath and contain it. Four towers would be built to pull her fury into this place and dispel it. But even with all we knew, with all we had, it would take too long. A thousand years we could labor and still the work would not be done. The first tower was never completed. The project abandoned. We moved on. But while we labored on other endeavors, a few returned. They thought to automate the process. Metal might finish what flesh could not. If we could not meet the sun's cruel embrace, perhaps we might rebuke it. Already we could generate fields to protect us in times of strife. But these were small and simple things. To replicate them on a scale the size of a world. We lack the energy to make it so. Half the world, they said then. It is better than none at all. We tried. Again, we failed. A quarter, they asked. Even this we could not do. A sixth, an eighth, a tenth, they cried. The answer was still the same. Perhaps in time a city might be spared. But it was time we did not have. So we moved on. Wonder what's inside. Only one way to find out. Desmond, there you are. Can I ask a favor? Maybe. When this is all over, I'd like to try turning the dial back on the Animus. Like, all the way back. To the time of the first civilization. You think it would work? There was no real loss of fidelity when you visited Altair. Then again, that was about a thousand years ago, and I'm looking at going back at least 70,000 more. Sure, I'd be up for it. It'd be interesting to see what things were like back then. Excellent. I think it would prove most enlightening. So this is how it started. What are you up to? Just brushing up on my American history. Well, if I say history, they certainly teach you strange things in the States. Like what? Well, for all the talk of this being a revolutionary war, it was a civil one. Well, not that kind of civil. I mean, there was no America versus Britain. It was Brit on Brit action. And you can clearly see how the whole thing got started. One war gave birth to the other. You mean the Seven Years' War? Exactly. Seems the Crown overspent in its attempt to keep the French out, wound up with a great deal of debt. Believing that the colonists should help to shoulder the burden, new taxes were created. It was a reasonable request. 
even if Parliament was rather, well, undiplomatic about it. Well, it's not really fair to tax people for a war they didn't want any part of. What? Didn't want any part of? Did you not notice George Washington with Edward Braddock? He was right there in the middle of it. So here you have the Crown spending who knows how much money to secure a place for the colonists to thrive, and then, when they ask for a little bit of help... Right, look, think of it this way. King George and the colonists, they all go out to dinner, right? And when the bill comes, George asks for them to kick in and pay their share. Fair enough. But keep in mind, he's been taking them out to dinner gratis for decades now. But the colonists, oh no, they insist they only had a glass of water and a side salad. Never mind the table's full of half-eaten food and empty bottles of wine. Then when the king points this out, what do the colonists do? Oh, they flip the table over and they storm out the restaurant. Probably intending to return later and burn it down. You left out the part where the king pointed a gun at the colonists and asked them to cover dinner for everyone in the restaurant. Right, right, yeah, interesting take. If he pulled out a gun, and I'm not sure he did, it would only have been after the hundredth failed attempt at getting them to pay their fair share. But how do you define someone's fair share? Oh, well, with a war, apparently. I wonder how many other places like this exist. There are dozens of them, all over the world. And somehow no one's ever found one before us. I don't think that's true. Oh? When I was at Abstergo, Vidic talked about silencing discoveries made by non-Templars. And I'm sure Abstergo has dug up plenty. The things they must know. Regretting throwing in with us? <laughs> no. Just looking forward to when we can finally trounce those bastards so I can dive into their archives. Oh, I think I found a lead on another power source. Later, Desmond. I'm in the middle of something very important right now. Just, that's a rule. Just follow that as a rule. Son? I, uh, I owe you an apology. I, I shouldn't have lashed out like that. You have to understand, I've never been very good at this. Never mind that we live rather extraordinary lives. Yeah, I kind of liked my ordinary one. You can't escape who you are, Desmond. So I've noticed. Look, it's silly for us to go back and forth like this. I admit, I did a shitty job raising you. I apologize, I'm sorry. But it's important you understand it didn't come from a bad place. You're my son. I love you. I guess I was so busy trying to make sure nothing bad happened, I didn't consider the consequences. Truce. I can't believe it's taken me so long to ask, but... How's Mom? She's not... No, 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 no. Your mother is fine. We decided it was safer if we split up for this job. Always assuming the worst. <laughs> for good reason. Can I at least say hi to her? I'm sorry, it's too risky. Maybe when we're done. Right. When we're done. Have... Have we ever tried to make peace with the Templars? Throughout our history, there have been moments. Several, in fact. But... It's impossible. There are existential differences, insurmountable. If there were to be unity, it wouldn't be a truce so much as a submission. But knowing what's about to happen, wouldn't it make sense to try and talk to Vidic? Come to an arrangement, even if it's only temporary? We'd all be so busy watching our backs, nothing would get accomplished. <laughs> Imagine that. We're more productive at war. Well, have we ever tried sending in someone? Doing to them what they did to us with Lucy? Or Cross? We have, and it's never worked. We've sent people who were either too weak and found themselves turned, or too strong and were unable to carry out the charade. I just feel like we all want the same thing. We use the same words, but that's all they are, words. In the end, it all comes down to freedom. We seek it, they detest it. And so there's never an end to the fight. Not until one side is completely gone. Is that even possible? Probably not. Our two groups have existed in one form or another since, well, 
dreams since forever. But things can be better than they are. And that's something. Did you look for me, Dad? When I was gone? Every day. Come on. I mean it. Every night I'd look, searching for your name or variations of it, hoping you'd slip up. Abstergo only found you first because they had better access. A few more days and it would have been me. Well, I'm here now. And I'm glad. Do you think Lucy regretted what she was doing? I used to think I knew her well, but clearly that wasn't the case. So I really can't give you an honest answer. She seemed so sincere, though. Like she really wanted to make a difference. Yes, well, when I first met him, I thought the same thing about Cross. It just keeps happening over and over again. What does? Everything. Don't get weird on me, Desmond. No, it, it's fine. I'm fine. Don't worry. All right, then. You should think about getting back in the Animus. We've got to find that key. We should probably get back to Connor. Come on, son. We got work to do. I know everyone thinks I'm being silly, but I can't shake the feeling we're being watched. We are being watched. By Juno. Or some version of her. Do you think it's a recording? Or is she a ghost? Or something else? Is she talking to us the way Minerva talked to Ezio? No clue. I mean, who knows what else they were working on down here. There's still so many rooms we don't have access to. But do you think she's like literally down here, waiting somewhere? Still alive. Still alive? That's mental. That I mean she'd be at least 75, 80,000 years old? So powerful, yeah, but not that powerful. They came down here looking for a way to survive. Maybe they found one. Was it weird seeing Cross? What do you mean? It's different for you. You don't know about what happened, I guess. For a long time, he was important to us. He was a different person. Sean said he was a sleeper agent, like Lucy. It was different. She made a choice, but Cross, if you read the files, Abstergo just, they, they did terrible things to him. Rebecca? You're lucky. We all are. We have people who care about us, who look out for us. He was all alone, and the people he thought he could trust, they used him. Did you know him? No, but I knew Hannah. Who's that? She tried to help him. She trusted him. But there was a raid about a year ago. She stayed behind so the others could escape. Tried to reason with him, to see if she could fix things. Well, what happened? What do you think happened? He killed her. That's what he does. That's all he knows how to do. Sometimes it seems like that's all any of us know how to do. Rebecca. I just want to be alone right now. I just want to be alone right now.
Good luck, Desmond. These are troubled times. The already uneasy alliance between the Crown and its subjects frays. And behind them both the Templars plot, pulling strings and moving pieces. History dictates they seek order through control. But how will they be affected here? Who supports them? And what conspiracies have they already spun? All these things I must determine. For only by knowing my enemy can I hope to stop them. Connor! Spare a moment. Of course. Have a look. What is it? Xing Bao, or rope dart if you prefer. One of the many plans given to us by Xiao Yun to... <sighs> Sorry. We'll have to work on this. Ganondogo. Yes, my friend. What brings you here? Is the village all right? For now. What do you mean? What has happened? Men came, claiming we had to leave. They said that the land was being sold and that the Confederacy had consented. We sent an envoy, but they would not listen. You must refuse! We cannot oppose the Sachem, but you're right as well. We cannot give up our home. Do you have a name? Do you know who is responsible? He is called William Johnson. Where is Johnson now? In Boston, making preparations for the sale. Sale? This is theft! Connor, take care. These men are powerful. What would you have me do? I made a promise to my people. If you insist upon this course of action, seek out Sam Adams in Boston. He'll be able to help. What have you done? When my people go to war, a hatchet is buried into a post to signify its start. When the threat is ended, the hatchet is removed. Uh, you could have used a tree. won't suffice, Sam. We need to act, and I'm talking about more than a sternly worded letter. I sympathize with your frustrations, gentlemen, but surely you can understand my reluctance to kick the hornet's nest. The Tories thing, no matter what we do, might as well make it count. Ah, Connor. Hello again. What brings you to Boston? You. Would you excuse us, fellows? Thank you. That conversation was about to turn unpleasant. Now, what can I do for you? I was hoping you could help me locate William Johnson. Of course. I'm headed to a meeting with some men who should be able to help. Why don't you come along? Ah, it's good to see the people finally taking a stand against injustice. Says the man who owns a slave. <laughs> Ooh, sorry? I practice what I preach, my friend. She's not a slave, but a freed woman, at least on paper. Men's minds are not so easily turned. It's a tragedy that for all our progress, still we cling to such barbarism. Then speak out against it. We must focus first on defending our rights. When this is done, we'll have the luxury of addressing these other matters. You speak as though your condition is equal to that of the slaves. It is not. Tell that to my neighbor who is compelled to quarter British troops. Or to my friend whose store was closed because he displeased the crown. The people here are no freer than Surrey. You offer excuse. Hey! It's my own! No matter what you thieves call taxmen say! If the gums in Parliament who want to take my property, you tell them to sail across the pond and take it themselves! 
It's not open for discussion. Now open this door or these men will break it down. Ah! The bullets, we're coming in. Ah! Oh! I trust the mounting evidence is proof enough, Connor. Continue on. I shall meet you at our destination. Justice for once. I dare the governor to send more. <clears throat> you all right? I'm fine. It's not my first dance. For all their teeth and claws, these little foxes, they fight like puppies. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. I'd buy you a nail, but uh, I'm expecting somewhere else. Connor, I'd like you to meet some like-minded friends. The owner of this fine establishment, William Molyneux, and the manager and chef of his newest venture, Stéphane Chaffaut. Ah, Connor and I just had a ball uh, with some red coats and forcing some tax men outside my home. The collectors grow bolder and more forceful. Something we must address, Samuel. Then let us raise a banner. Something to let the people know that they are not alone. The docks are an angry place of late. Protesters picketing the latest shipments of British tea. The eyes of the city are upon that stage. A Bostonian without his tea is a dangerous beast. William Johnson is smuggling the tea off the ships. One of his men tried to sell me this. A sample of what I refused. But it's from those ships. No mistaking the stamp. He's charging a king's ransom. Must be he's making a mint off those who buy it. Where is he now? I've never met the man. May I ask why you seek him, Connor? He intends to purchase the land upon which my village stands, without the consent of my people. No doubt the revenue from his little smuggling endeavor is financing the acquisition. A tax enforced on tea grants a boon to smugglers. I'll wager the same men who levy the taxes are selling the tea. A stage requires a spectacle, and I may know the play. Connor, head back to the docks and see to the destruction of the tea. If you should need us, return here. Go on, Connor. Pardon me. Oh, come on, mate.
Stefan, what is wrong? Where is Sam Adams? Who cares? I've been robbed! Pour me le payer, ces scélérats de merde! Where are you going? To get back what's rightfully mine. And listen to me. I've listened for long enough. They come into my home and take my things. I will get my revenge. The man responsible for this will pay. His friends will pay. Voilà trop longtemps que je suis mis la con. Ils vont couper de mon tour. You were looking for a fight, Englishman. I'll give you what you want. Ils me volent ma maison, ils m'obligent à fuir mon pays, et les voici qui veulent s'approprier ma nouvelle demeure. Not it. Jacket, crapule Destroyed? You stupid mackerel! I suppose you want me to tell Johnson his tea just spontaneously combusted? Nonsense! Someone's responsible for this, and you will find out who! And if you can't, I'll gut you! and find a smarter mongrel who can. What do we do? Create a window. to rob people blind, by decree of the British Parliament or not. British Parliament? I work for William Johnson. Johnson? And his suffering cleanly. Please. The 
the people seem to have an ear for you? What are the things you lost? The people listen to me only because I spoke the truth loud enough, which is worth 1,000 times the content of my footlocker. And the English, they can keep my things. You did well tonight. I said I'd buy you an ale when you first helped me. In place of drink, I offer you my allegiance. For what it's worth. Your aid is welcome, and I am grateful. Now, I need to find Sam Adams. Governor Hutchison refuses to let them leave, wants us to take the tea, pay the duties, and say thank you kindly to the king. The king can kindly kiss my ass. You'd like that, wouldn't you? You can kiss it as well. Enough! What hope have we of resisting if we're arguing amongst ourselves? What happens now? We wait for the signal. What signal? This meeting can do nothing further to save the country. That one. Evening, gentlemen. Shall we be off? No. What's the matter? I have spent today drawn from one bit of madness to another with nothing to show for it. Before I go any further, I would like to know exactly what it is you intend. Of course. First, we make our way to Nathaniel Bradley's house to fetch the rest of our little group. Then it's on to Griffin's Wharf, where we board the ships and dump the tea. Simple as that. Simple seems a bit charitable. Cheer up, Connor. For tonight, we are all victors. The Sons of Liberty get to send a message to England, and you rob William Johnson of his financing. Your village will be saved. I have an idea. Why don't you lead the way? That should keep us out of any further trouble. Am I right? Damn it, more guards. We need to turn the crowd's anger to our advantage. Stay the world, Connor, and I will make it so.
We need to keep those bastards at bay while the tea is being dumped. Let me help. I'm yours to command. Save the last one for you. We get out of here.
It is done. Johnson is dead? No. He retreated when we destroyed the team. Only to hatch some new scheme, I'm sure. You should have killed him. There was no need. <sighs> Time will tell if you speak the truth. Radun Hagedum! Radun Hagedum! Ganon Dokong, why are you here? Has something happened? William Johnson has returned with all the money required to buy our land. He meets with the elders as we speak. I have begged him to resist, but I fear he shall have his way unless you intervene. How is this possible? We destroyed the tea. The Templars are nothing if not resourceful. You should have heeded my warning. Please, you have to stop him. Of course. Can you tell me where they're meeting? Izi na kanya daradit kanus de ne Johnson si unja daro rokstha. Kwa hi kanzi wat ne kanun haradun hagedum. Ta kwa der harat kwa kanto. Peace. Have I not always been an advocate? Take the land Have I not course? always sought to protect you from harm? If you wish to protect us, then give us arms, muskets and horses that we might defend ourselves. War is not the answer. We remember, Stanwix. We remember you moved the borders. Even today your men dig up the land, showing no regard for those who live upon it. Your words are honeyed but false. We are not here to negotiate, nor to sell. We are here to tell you and yours to leave these lands. So be it. I offered you an olive branch, and you knocked it from my hand. Perhaps you'll respond better to the sword. Are you threatening us? Yes. Oh no. What have you done? Ensured an end to your schemes. You sought to claim these lands for the Templars. Aye. That we might protect them. Do you think that good King George lies awake at night, hoping that no harm comes to his native subjects? 
Are the people of the city care one whit about them? Oh, sure. The colonists are happy to trade when they need food or shelter or a bit of extra padding for their armies. But when the walls of the city constrict, when there's crops that need soil, when there's... when there's no more enemy to fight, we'll see how kind the people are then. The colonists have no quarrel with the Iroquois. Not yet. But they will. Tis the way of the world. In time, they'll turn. I... I could have stopped it. I could have saved you all. You speak of salvation, but you were killing them. Aye, because they would not listen. And so, it seems, neither will you. I was ne yate hagum sere, am da hia yum ne skanas is agum haje. William Johnson is dead, and with him, the Templar plot to steal the land of my people. But in ending this threat, I have revealed another. On his body was a letter addressed to John Pitcairn containing orders to root out and destroy Patriot weapons and supplies. Should he succeed in this, the colonists will be unable to maintain their resistance, and the Templars will surely take control. So long as Pitcairn lives, the danger remains. I need to find him. He needs to die. I thought it might bring clarity or instill a sense of accomplishment, but all I feel is regret. Hold fast to that. Such sacrifices must never come lightly. I had to do it. Not only for my people, but for all the others Johnson would have harmed. It's a start. But to truly be free of Templar influence, all of them must be dealt with in turn. Even your father... I know. You speak the words, but do you believe them? Seems we've company. What is it? A request for aid from Paul Revere. Seems the Redcoats are up to something in Boston. Guess you made an impression on the Sons of Liberty. They mistake me for one of their own. Please tell Mr. Revere he has my sympathies, but I cannot help at present. You might wish to reconsider. John Pitcairn is mentioned by name. Where am I to go? Mr. Revere's house in Boston. If you'd like, I can... Summer sun has beaten you into the shade. 
Ah, Connor! What a relief! You came! <laughs> Allow me to... <laughs> to introduce you to William Dawes and Robert Newman. Your letter said John Pitcairn was here. Aye. He's readying an assault on Lexington, where Adams and Hancock have taken shelter. After that, he will march on Concord, hoping to destroy our weapons and supplies. You must help us. Only tell me where to find him, and I will put a stop to this. He has dozens, if not hundreds, of soldiers at his command. You cannot hope to match him by yourself. But fear not, for you will not have to. We have an entire army of our own, merely awaiting the order to take up arms. Then you must call upon them. Indeed. You and I will cross the Charles River and rouse the boys. William, I need you to take the overland route and do the same. Robert, I need you up in Christchurch. Light the signal. Two lanterns, our enemy comes by sea. No time for dawdling, my friend. We have lives to save. Come on. Huh. They've only left a single horse. We'll have to ride together. Ah! You take the reins, I'll navigate. Quickly, Connor, get on the horse! I'll guide you towards those we need to alert. Follow my directions, and we'll be done in no time. This way, Connor! Yes! This is it! This is the way! This way! Redcoats. What are they doing here? They must be scouts. Be careful, Connor. We mustn't let them warn the others. Go left up here. Let us continue the search on foot. <coughs> this is it. You have got the right place. Let everyone know that the regulars marked for Lexington and Concord. The British are coming! Back in the saddle, my friend. We have more people to warn. I believe we are on course. Yes! This is it! This is the way! Yes! This is exactly where we need to be! Wouldn't surprise me if we ran into more trouble. Stay alert! This way, Connor! Left! Let us continue the search on foot. This is it! You have got the right place! Spread the word. The regulars are coming out. At once! Keep going! To 
the left, Connor! Uh, Connor? Connor. We should dismount for this. Be quicker and quieter. This is it. You have got the right place. The regulars are coming. Here. We're here. Get them! We've got to shake those redcoats. We've got to shake those redcoats! We need to lose them! That was much too close for comfort. Let us take care to avoid any further surprises. Go right, Connor! Go left up here. I believe we are on course. We should dismount for this. It'll be quicker and quieter. This is it. You have got the right place. Where the devil is he? Are you sure we are in the right place? Oh, sure I'm sure. Prescott? Evening, gents. Listen, the regulars are out. You need to rally your men. And, uh, put on some trousers. At once! Welcome to Lexington, Connor. Now let's find Hancock and Adams. Hmm. No sign of Dawes. I hope he's all right. Paul, Connor. Good to see you. You need to leave. The Redcoats are coming. Aye, so Williams told us. Let them conduct their little search. They'll find nothing. You don't understand. Pitcairn intends to kill you. I'm afraid it's true. I suppose we have no choice then but to go. What of you three? Dawes and I will continue on to Concord. Connor, it's best you stay here and help our man John Parker hold the town. It'll give us time to spread the word. Men. <coughs> Don't fire! 
unless fired upon! But if they mean to have a war, let it begin here! Pit can. Disperse, you damn rebels! Lay down your arms and disperse! What the deuce are you doing? Hold your position! Cravens! Traitors! They are not coming back. You will have to make do with those who remain. Don't you lecture me or now. Return fire! Return fire! You need to get to Concord and warn the others. Show this to whoever leads there. Should be a man by the name of James Barrett. Go on now! Blood's been spilled in Lexington, and there's more to come. The regulars are on the march. You don't say. But why do you think I'm men up here? Go home, or you get yourself killed. Have enough to worry about without some green boy looking to play at hero. I can vouch for him. John Parker as well. Where's Revere? Captured. What? Fear not. That man's no stranger to sticky situations. He'll be fine. I'm sure of it. <clears throat> Your ladies finished gossiping? Parker seems to believe you're not completely useless, so... I suppose there's a thing or two you might be able to help with. When the fighting starts, we'll need to hold those positions there. They're critical to the defense of Concord. Good boys. Not used to soldier and they need some with the experience to direct them. That's something you can do. You'd best be telling the truth. You have my word. Then I suppose all that's left to do is wait. Sir! 
Cypher! Mount the barricades! No! Ensure my men hold those positions. If the Red Devils break through, we're finished. What would you have me do? Listen carefully. The Red Coats will form firing lines. Order the men to shoot just before the line is ready. Too soon and they'll miss their targets. Too late and the enemy will open fire first. Understood. And if any of those bastards make it through, engage them. You must keep my men alive. Make ready. Wait for my signal. Wait for my signal. Fire now! Prepare yourselves. Prepare yourself. Go! Make ready! Fire! Make ready! Open fire! Prepare yourselves! Make ready! Fire now! Wait for my signal! Prepare yourselves! Signal. Wait for the signal. Open fire. Wait for my sick. Open fire. Prepare yourself. Go. Hold fire. Prepare yourselves. Fire now. Wait for my signal. Hold fire! Open fire. Wait for my signal. Wait for the si Fire! Wait for the signal. Fall back! Fall back! We did it! They're turning tail! Takes a true monster to do something like this. At least they're gone. I should have struck when I had the chance. Do you know where Pitcairn could have gone? Back into the withered bosom of the British, no doubt. So that he may regroup and plan his next atrocity. I need to find him. Every day I wait, more will suffer. Chin up, friend. Many who should have died today now live because of you. And, and what of them? We do the best we can with what we've got. It is not enough. Hmm. It never is.
for the support of the glorious cause. I beg they will accept my most cordial thanks for this distinguished testimony of their approbation. But lest some unlucky event should happen, unfavorable to my reputation, I beg it may be remembered by every gentleman in the room that I, this day, declare with utmost sincerity, I do not think myself equal to the command I am honored with. Truly, there as is no pay, man better suited sir, I to the task. Leave to assure really? The Congress that I as can no think of pecuniary seven. Consideration could have Charles me Lee. To have accepted this arduous employment at the do I know you? I would not expect happiness. you to remember. <laughs> Come, Connor, there's someone I want you to problem. meet. I will keep an exact account of my expenses. Sorry to pull you away Those, like that, I but doubt not they the will last discharge, thing we need is the two of you coming to blows. Now, Connor, allow me to introduce you to our newly appointed Commander-in-Chief, George Washington. Ah, so you're the one who saved Sam and John at Lexington. It was the Patriots who did that. I merely lent support. As humble as he is brave, we could use more men like you. I'm sorry, but if you'll excuse me, I should attend to Charles over there. He looks none too happy about being passed over for command. It was good to meet you, Connor. Tell me you have news of Pitcairn. I'm told he's taken shelter in Boston, where he's guarded by a thousand redcoats. The only way you're gonna get at him is if we draw him out. And lucky for you, we're launching an offensive against the city in order to do just that. Israel Putnam has been given command of our forces. Present this to him and he'll provide whatever aid you require. You'll find him at the encampment on Bunker Hill. You have my thanks. No need. It's the least I could do. Pitcairn's a dangerous man. The sooner we're rid of him, the better. I would say the same of Charles Lee. Now that's an altogether different beast. Let us leave it for another day. Best you head to Boston, Connor. Still here, are you? I was just wondering, what happens now? There's quite a lot to do. Commander Washington must determine when and where we'll strike next. And we need to get to work on our message. Message? We must contact the broadsheets at once. Ensure it's clear to everyone that it was the Loyalists who fired first in Lexington. But no one knows who fired first. Which is exactly why we must spread the news quickly. We'll determine public opinion. This seems dishonest. Perhaps, but so what? People must believe we acted in self-defense, else we've committed treason. But you have. Better to bow and scrape before a tyrant, then? Is that what you suggest? No, of course not. No one should be denied freedom. And yet, to change the truth, it seems a dangerous road to travel. Understand, Connor. This is a war fought not just on the battlefield, but within hearts and minds as well. There's nothing wrong with a bit of theater, especially if it saves lives.
hold and stay your... I'm looking for Israel Putnam. On whose orders? Samuel Adams. Follow me. This is not Bunker Hill. Aye, it's Breed. There's been some disagreement as to where we should encamp. Any news from Boston? The Tories aren't moving. And any time we try to press them, we lose a dozen men. I think Putnam and the others plan to assemble artillery on these hills. A good shelling might make the Red Coast rethink their strategy. And what of John Pitcairn? That bastard's the cagiest of the bunch. He's appeared time to time to taunt us or send regards by way of cannon fire. It's all right, though. He'll have what's coming to him soon enough. Putnam's just up ahead. You call me. I don't care much for your excuses, gentlemen. We should be building on Bunker Hill. Breeze is closer to the city, but it is also closer to their artillery! Our orders came from men so divorced from the situation, we are compelled by reason to employ our own faculties to make a proper determination. Were that I could understand even half that nonsense you just uttered. What's not to understand? I'm trying to ensure our victory! What would you know about victory? I killed a sea wolf in her den armed with only a knife! I escaped the Kanawaga Indians who sought to burn me alive! And I was the sole survivor of a shipwreck during the Battle of Havana! So you will excuse me if I choose not to follow you. Case. I'm going back to Bunker Hill! Good morning, gentlemen! General Putnam! What? I am looking for him. I was told we'd be able to help me find him. He's stuck away inside that city with no reason to leave. As long as that ship continues its assault, we'll never flush him out. But if the ship was silenced... Oh, that Putnam might be forced to get off his arse and come forward. I fly this flag to signal my success. And I shall speak fondly of you at your funeral.
Gain better numbers, you say. Better weapons, better training. But I do not fear. And neither should you. For what they have in material, they lack in conviction and care. But not us. We have discipline. We have order. And most importantly, we have passion! We believe! So maintain vigilance. Serve your ammo. Ensure a proper line of sight. And above all else, men, do not fire until you see the whites of their eyes. I'll be damned. <laughs> you did it. That was quite a speech. Lies, all of it, I'm afraid. Still, such words have carried us thus far. And what of Pitcairn? He's left Boston. As I said, he would. And set up camp on Molten Hill. There's no good way to get at him. Not with that maelstrom growing down below. I suppose you could circle around a bit and wait for us to thin their ranks. There is no time. I will have to chance a direct approach. That's twice today you proposed the impossible. I see no other choice. Not because you're mad as a March Hare, son. I expect an apology when I return.
Why did you do this? To protect Adams and Hancock and those they serve. You meant to kill them. Kill them? Are you mad? I wanted only to parley. There was so much to discuss. To explain. Do you put an end to that now? If you speak true, then I will carry your last words to them. They must lay down their arms. They must stop this war. Why them and not the Redcoats? Do not think we ask the same question of the British. These things take time. And I would have succeeded had you let me play my part. Part of the puppeteer. Or better we hold the strings on another. No, the strings should be severed. All should be free. And we should live forever on castles in the sky. You wield your blade like a man, but your mouth like a child. And more will die now because of that. Sa ha yu yanar ne o tenam da setta kwe. Tini o ne ya ho tena tam da setta kwe. How dare you sneak up on me like that? Why should you just go out there and just help this camp retreat? Don't ever do that again, you hear me? God damn it. General Putnam. You live. The same cannot be said for Pitcairn. Well done, I suppose. <laughs> But it matters little now. I'm ordering a full retreat. We have lost too many in exchange for too little. If the Tories want this hill so badly, let them have it. Boston is the true prize. We have a bigger problem. What do you mean? This can't be right. It says they plan to murder Washington. My enemy is tenacious. When money failed them, they took to force. But I have slain Johnson and Pitcairn both, ending their plots. George Washington now rallies the colonists, and their march towards freedom begins in earnest. Little wonder, then, that the Templars now want him dead. They seek to reshape this land into something cold and ordered, something soulless. And he is an obstacle. I must save him, that his cause can flourish and my people remain safe. But the more I prod, the greater the chance I am discovered. The Templars believe their men lost the revolution. In their eyes, the assassins are gone and scattered, no longer a threat. But I fear they will soon discover the truth, and me along with it. I must tread carefully. How fair is the hunt, Connor? There is progress, but I worry it is not enough. You must strike where you need it most. What if you pursued Charles Lee and your father? What then of Paul Revere and the soldiers at Lexington? Soldiers? There were no soldiers in those towns, only men and women who were forced to defend themselves. Is this not why you fight? To protect your people? Your struggle is the colonist's struggle. In helping one, you help the other. Encouraging words from one who thought mine a fool's errand. <laughs> Make no mistake, I still do, but I can't help but feel some pride in your success. And why should I give you any credit? Then don't. But uh, first, return the robe and the blade and the, and the darts and all of the years of training and knowledge I have bestowed upon you. Return these, and then your words may have some merit. Or you could just admit that you are wrong. 
Oh, child, please, you've killed two men, one more salesman than soldier. You're going to have to try a lot harder than that to impress me. Is that so, old man? Or perhaps we should step outside. I will gladly demonstrate how easily I could... Trounce. Connor, this is Benjamin Talmadge. His father was one of us, no need for secrecy. I think he has something he wants to say. Achilles tells me you've uncovered a plot to murder the Commander-in-Chief. Yes, but I have only false starts and dead ends to show for it. Not anymore, my friend. Thomas Hickey's your man, and I aim to help you catch him. How? I'll explain on the way. You and I are going to New York. So what is your stake in all this? Same as yours. Peace. Stability. A land in which all might live side by side. Free and equal. Why not join the Brotherhood, then? My father was an assassin. Quite good at his job, too, as I understand it. But... I hope to have children someday. It's hard to live in two worlds at the same time. So, I chose to live in one. I understand. I still contribute as I can. That's why we're here now. What can you tell me of Thomas Hickey? He has been running a counterfeiting ring in the city. Locate the source of his operation, and we can have him arrested. He cannot harm the commander if he is in prison. Do you know where he is? Not exactly, but I have an idea where we can begin the search. Bad bills being circulated here. No doubt they come from Thomas. What are you up to? This isn't money. It's colored paper. You've cheated me for the last time. God!
Good. Daniel, let's put them bills away. The guard is onto us. How? What happened? Damn shopkeeper called me out. Brought the guard when I gave him the slip. Boss is gonna be mad. Not so mad as if I'd gotten caught. Besides, we've got most everything we need for the job now anyway. Let's go tell him. I'll warn the others. wants everyone back at the shop. Says we strike tonight. They're worried about that business with the guards. I'm telling you, it's nothing. I've met a spot of trouble since I slipped away. Of course, I'm taking care to keep my distance. Can't believe we're really gonna do this. This Friday sundown at the Blue Ball. All members of that good fraternity are asked to attend. Can't believe we're really gonna do this. We'll be heroes. Ones who ended all this talk of revolution. They'll set us up like. Eh, revolution. A bunch of troublemakers looking to upset the apple cart. And some fool filled their heads with rubbish. Good folk. Really? Of course. You and me and Hickey. Just some hard luck lads trying to survive in this cold, cruel world. <laughs> What's this? Thomas Hickey? Might be. What's it to you? Huh. Ain't supposed to be none of your kind left. Suppose I'd best be rectifying that then. Get him!
Be still. You will do no more harm. You're a right fool meddling in affairs you know nothing about. Washington's the only thing keeping the Continental Army together. You kill him, you end all hope for freedom. Wrong, boy -o. With him gone, they'll have no choice but to promote Lee, and then... You are both under arrest! Oh, well, we were just having a scrap, officer. Ain't nothing wrong with uh, two men settling their differences the old-fashioned way. Can't we come to a... Quiet! What are the charges? Counterfeiting! I had nothing to do with that. Of course not! Listen, there are more important things at stake here. This man is planning to... Ah. You... You miss me, sweetheart. What? Nothing to say. If you are here, then Washington is safe. True, true. Thing is, I believe I've just been pardoned. Thank you kindly for the rescue, gents. There can be no further mistakes, Thomas. Am I understood? What about this, the assassin? Yeah. He's here. They put him in a cell right next to mine. Guess we didn't get them all, eh? Deal with this, Charles. At once, sir. What are we gonna do? You're that boy from the Continental Congress. Adams's little lapdog. Hmm. I think I have an idea. Yes. Two birds with one stone. Do tell. All in good time. It's not like the assassin's going anywhere. For now, we should see about getting you better accommodations here. What are you on about? I thought I was getting out. I'm afraid you won't be leaving for a while, thanks to Benjamin Talmadge. He's been running his mouth, saying all sorts of things. You're being investigated for plotting to assassinate George Washington. What a bunch of bollocks. I thought you was going to handle that. We'll discuss this elsewhere. I'm telling you, he's planning to escape. We should get in on it. Yeah, and what makes you think that? Caught him carving something in the yard. Slipped it in his pocket real quick when he saw me. Looked like a key. Probably just a shiv. Nah, Mason ain't a fighter. Always talking and tricking his way out of trouble. Weasel weems, they call him. Sticky bastard. Come on, Finch. He's not so bad. Even told me some letters once. Gonna write a note to my lady. Ha! <laughs> what for? You think that whore's out there pining for you? Saving herself for when you get out? Huh? No doubt she's already moved on to the next fella, and the fella after him. You shut your mouth before I shut it for you. Easy now. It was just a joke. Yeah? Well, it wasn't very funny. Quiet in there! Hmm. I think I would rather hold it in. Get up! Where are we going? Stay out of trouble or you'll wind up in the pit! Breed. You not understand English, that it? Do I need to knock some sense into that thick head of yours?
I should try and find this Weems fellow. If he intends to escape, perhaps he can help me. Mason Weems? Could be. I need your help. Oh? They say you know a way out of here. They say a lot of things. I do not have time for games. A shame. As I was hoping you might play one with me. Fine. Are you familiar with the rules? Seeing as you already know mine, what's your name? Connor. Pleased to meet you, Connor. Well played. So, what brings you to Bridewell? Treachery. I have been falsely accused. Of course you have. You do not believe me? Why should I? You have the look of a brute. <laughs> you misjudge. I am an honest man. And yet, also a man imprisoned. Tell me how you found yourself in this place. It is a private matter. As is what you ask of me. I was trying to prevent a murder. Oh! Anyone I know? George Washington. The others put you up to this, didn't they? Thought it might be fun to have another laugh at Mason's expense. Fools, a lot of them. To make light of something like this? George Washington is brave beyond measure. Loyal like a brother, peerless in character, and unshakable in his convictions. That man is our Jupiter Conservator. Destined to lead us not just to freedom, but greatness. Anyone who says otherwise is either a simpleton or a traitor. Then you understand why I need to get out of here. If I don't help him, he is going to die. You're serious, aren't you? Very well. But it's going to take some doing. See, everything hinges on the key I forged. That loud finch stole it. it. Took me three months to make the thing, too. <sighs> you need to get it back, or we're not going anywhere. Consider it done. He is useless. What are you looking at? You in the market for us, Bin? Your key is useless. What do you mean? It did not fit the lock. It's not meant to. You forged a key that does not work. Well, that all depends on what you mean by work. It'll get us out of here. Just not the way you expected. Then how? You're going to use it to get the real key off the warden. You have to swap yours for his. Why don't you just have me take the real key? Why all this extra work? You might notice if it went missing. This way, he'll be none the wiser. And when he tries to use it? He won't. That's why we're targeting him. <sighs> How do I reach the warden? Yes. This next part, you may not like.
Oh, as if I've liked the others. Out with it. You need to pick a fight. What? Pick a fight, and they'll throw you in the pit. And how in the world does this help us? The warden oversees the pit. Getting sent there is the only way to reach him. I give you credit. You've given this plan to risk my life a great deal of thought. Take down as many as you can. One or two will only serve to entertain the guards. You need to make them angry. We all have our part to play. Try not to die. yourself a troublemaker, eh? Some time in the pits to cool your blood. Look at all of you, pathetic, dirty wretches. You're not but swine, suckling at the teats of civilization. Thieves and scoundrels all. Need to take care not to raise the alarm. You'll find Hickey through that door. It's where they keep the important prisoners. Nicer rooms, more space, those sorts of things. It seems even in prison, who you know makes all the difference. Thank you, Mason, for everything. I will find a way to repay the favor when my work here is finished. Not who you was expecting, am I right? What have we here? I thought we'd finished off your kind. You would like that, wouldn't you? To rid the world of all who do not share your views. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Your meddling in the revolution has caused us no small measure of grief. It cannot continue. Our work is too important. 
But what would you know beyond all the lies Achilles feeds you and the tales you tell yourself? I know that the people wish to be free, and that men like Washington fight to make it so. Please, the man is weak. He stumbles and stammers through each engagement, making it all up as he goes along. His pedigree is pathetic, his military record even more so. I could go on and on, but we'd be here for days. So manifold are his faults, so deficient are his merits. He must be dealt with. You as well. I will abide no more flies in the ointment. Here's how it's gonna work. First we bind you and bring you to your cell. Then tomorrow, you go before the court, accused of plotting to kill good old Georgie. <laughs> Hmm. Maybe we could pin the murder of uh, the warden on you, too. You did kill him, after all. And who wouldn't take the word of Charlie over here? Hmm. Once that's all squared away, well then. <laughs> Those years ago, the child in the forest was you. I said I would find you. <gasps> and so you have. But not quite as you had expected, am I right? <laughs> you know, all of this might have been avoided had you only done what I asked. Ah, but what's done is done. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hello, Connor. Didn't think I'd miss your going away party, did ya? <laughs> I hear Washington himself is gonna be in attendance. Hope nothing bad happens to him. You said there'd be a trial. Oh, no trial for traitors, I'm afraid. Lee and Haytham sort of that. It's straight to the gallows for you. <laughs> I will not die today. The same cannot be said for you. That's enough! Keep moving! Give a cry when you need us. 
Forget about me. You need to stop Hickey. He's... Uh, up you go. Don't want to be late now, do we? You just had to be an hero, didn't you? You and Georgie both. Now you see what it gets you. A pine box and little else. Brothers, sisters, fellow patriots. Several days ago, we learned of a scheme so vile, so dastardly, that even repeating it now disturbs my being. The man before you plotted to murder our much beloved general. Indeed, what Darkness or madness moved him, none can say, and he himself offers no defense, shows no remorse. And though we have begged and pleaded with him to share what he knows, he maintains a deadly silence. If the man will not explain himself, if he will not confess and atone, what other option do we have but this? He sought to send us into the arms of the enemy. And thus we are compelled by justice to send him from this world. May God have mercy on your soul. Need to stop, Hickey. Go! at least live to see another day. <sighs> Shame. I want answers. Why did Johnson try and buy my people's land? Why was Pitcairn targeting Adams and Hancock? What purpose would Washington's murder have served? Why does your order support the British? How should I know? The Templars, Lee, the big man, Haytham. They has the money. They has the power. That's the reason I threw him with them. That's the only reason. Sure, they have some sort of vision for the future, too. I didn't give a damn about any of that. They can sing their songs about mankind and its troubles. They can make their plans and spring their traps. Don't bother me none. They paid me, so I said yes. Didn't bother to ask who or how or why. Didn't care. You chose to side with men who would rob us of our humanity simply because it was more profitable? What else is there? I'm not some blind fool who give up all I've got on principle. What is principle anyway? Can you bring it to the bank? Don't look at me like that. We're different, you and I. You're just some blind fool who's always chasing butterflies. Whereas I'm the type of guy who likes to have a beer in one hand and a tea in the other. Thing is, boy, I can have what I seek. Had it even. You, your hands will always be empty. At ease, man! At ease! I said... Lower your goddamn guns! This man's a hero! 
Oh, the general can be so stubborn sometimes. Piffle, he said, when we warned him something like this would happen. Piffle! Stop. He wanted to kill the commander. Nearly killed you as well. He was a scoundrel. But still a man. Hm. You're nothing if not consistent. Where is Washington? I need to speak with him. Bundled off as soon as your execution went sideways. He's likely on his way back to Philadelphia by now. And so am I. Something wrong? He is still in danger. Hickey did not act alone. It's quite impressive what you've accomplished. Is that a compliment? Now, don't misconstrue. I'm sure the whole endeavor will end tragically. But to have come this far, well, it's more than I ever expected. The people yearned for freedom but feared to grab hold of it. That fear is gone now. Thanks to you? No. This they did on their own. You diminish your role. But you have always been of humble heart. I do what is right. No more, no less. You cannot tell him. I have to. Otherwise, he will never be safe. He is safer not knowing. By planting the seeds of doubt, you threaten to topple his entire endeavor. If Washington is paralyzed, Charles Lee will strike. You'll cause the very thing you aim to prevent. Hunt the Templars as is your duty. But do not drag these men into it. We must now all hang together. Yes, we must indeed all hang together. Or most assuredly, we shall all hang separately. You are once more our savior. I must speak with the commander. He's gone to try and hold New York. The British intend to take it. I fear we'll need to recall our men from Quebec as well. It's one thing to declare our independence. Now, my friend, we must make it so. Everything all right? Sean has located a second power source. I've asked Rebecca to charter a flight for us. Where to? Brazil. You there, Rebecca? Bad reception. Can you hear me? Well, glad to see that's working. Guess I'll try you back when I'm topside. Copy now. Loud and clear. What's the plan? According to our intel, the power source is being worn as a bracelet by some tycoon's trophy wife. We're working on pinpointing her location, but she's Preciso most likely inside a VIP booth on the stadium's Preciso upper level. I'll update you when I know more. Now to find the ticket. We don't have time to play nice. Steal someone else's. Bit of a dick move, don't you think? Well, I guess you could try and sneak past security instead. That doesn't look like normal security. Because it isn't. Those are Abstergo agents. Cross is probably here too. You need to be careful.
Você viu este homem? Chame a segurança imediatamente, Silvi. Your target's definitely in the VIP area. The entrance is at the end of this concourse. Great. They've set up a checkpoint. Stick close to the crowd and you should be okay. Or look for a way around it. Looks like I'm close. Shit! Another checkpoint. You're gonna have to find another way around. We're going to lose our identity. We have to verify your identity. Olha, aconteceu, só isso. A gente não queria que acontecesse. Só aconteceu. Sinto muito. Sente muito. Almost there, Desmond. She's just on the other side of the stage. Ah, other side? Que bundo de matinho. Passam 20 minutos simulando essa fama. Watch your back, you're on here. Quebrou as costas, trabalhando em 10 horas por semana para tirar sem prato, violência. We can get back to Connor whenever you're ready, Desmond. Unless you want to plug in the power source first. Up to you. What is a fact? Is it fixed? Immutable? 
certain in its existence and only awaiting discovery? Or might it be changed? Here we learned the answer and thought that it might save us. They were used to command, to control, to own. But we soon discovered another use. When enough sat in thrall and were told to believe, their thoughts took on form. What was imagined became real. If a hundred minds could wish away a wall or create a tree, what might a thousand do? Ten thousand? More? Might we change the consensus and will the threat away? We resolved to send one into the sky where it might illuminate us all. Once placed, a sentence would be uttered. Make us safe. In this way, we would change the consensus. We would save the world. But it never came to be. We sent a dozen of them skyward, but there was no way to maintain control to direct the beam, to enthrall the world, to speak the words. Though this was strange and dangerous, what we tried next was worse. back to change the past but we could not find a way but forward we could look forward and so here we sought to see beyond ourselves and know what was to come first we watched to learn if our work would succeed but the answer was always the same so we moved on to other things but she remained, the one you call Minerva. In time, she too stopped looking, and instead began to speak. She called out across time, in the hopes that you might be saved. She hid messages where none might find them, save for you and those within this place. Fascinating. Tired of it. The cryptic warnings, the threats. Just tell us what you want! But they are. We saw the Nephilim there. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Imagine trying to explain all this to a two-year-old, to a grasshopper. When they said the will of the gods was unknowable, they meant it. Literally. I killed her, you know. I killed Lucy. It was the Apple, son. It was Juno. I saw what she was. What would happen if I let her live? I could have stopped myself. I mean, there was a force there. But I didn't have to. I chose to. Desmond. Lucy was going to betray us and take the Apple back to Abstergo. I saw the satellite launched. I saw them turn it on and then... It failed. Whatever's on the other side of that door, it benefits Juno. We need to be careful.
tell me today? I'm telling you, there's something down here. Don't be daft. I don't know, maybe they were sleeping or something and we woke them. Some kind of cryogenics or hibernation. I mean, how do we know what the hell they were doing down here? They were working on a bunch of different solutions, but nothing worked. Just went from one to the next and then, I don't know. They must have left at some point, after the end. I wonder what the world would be like if they'd succeeded. I'm more concerned about what it'll be like if we don't. Salvation. They found a way. Too late for them, but not for you. Sealed to protect it. Though now it bars your way. Find the key. The past will tell. So, what's the latest? Learn anything interesting while you were exploring? They were working on some... Weird stuff towards the end. They're trying to engineer new bodies and store their minds inside computers. Failure after failure. It must have been hard for them. I worry about it too. I mean, they say there's something in here that'll help us, but what is it? Why is it locked up if it's exactly what we need? I don't know. Maybe it's dangerous. Maybe they wanted to make sure only you could reach it. That's the other question. What makes me so special? I guess we'll know once we open the door. Hey, I hope it's not uncomfortable for me to ask, but what happened with Lucy? I don't know. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said anything. No, it's fine. I really don't know. I was talking to my dad about it. It's, it's hard to say. I mean, Juno definitely took control, but I think I agreed to it on some level. I think I let her in. No. <laughs> That's not right. It, it wasn't her. Not exactly. It, it was more like a... a program. Does that sound weird? It, it showed me things. What'd you see? That if I didn't stop Lucy, Abstergo would get the apple, and we'd all be dead. I still don't understand why she turned on us. I'm sure she thought she was doing the right thing. I gotta get back to work. You might want to do the same. Sorry, Desmond. A little busy right now. Oh, I unbelievable. What's up? Your politicians are constantly referencing the Founding Fathers and insisting they must have been in support of one thing or another. I have never seen such a blatant disregard for history. That's just typical political propaganda. It's also dishonest and delusional. How can anyone claim to know what these people wanted based off scraps of paper and wishful thinking? They're looking for intent. What these men envision for our country and its future. Idealistic and unlikely. I don't think most of your presidents and senators and judges care what the founders thought. They just want to know how they can bend old words to achieve modern goals. Who cares if they were deists or theists or wanted a central bank? Why do people need the validation? What should matter is what you, as an individual, believe and why you believe it. What, are we so insecure that we have to find 18th century letters to validate our beliefs? Oh, look, Mum, a dead man agreed with me. Maybe. If you transpose the letters in his shopping list, you can plainly see he was on my side. Jesus, Sean. It's a cynical way to look at it. Doesn't make it less true. I keep trying to understand how men like Washington and Jefferson could dedicate their lives to the pursuit of liberty and equality, yet have no problem owning slaves. It's hypocritical in the extreme, and your history books make only passing mention of the subject, as if 
as if it were of little consequence. They had a war to win. Country's future to secure. How could they deal with all these issues at the same time? Spoken like a true apologist. We hear it today, too, that matters of civil rights and equality must wait. There are conflicts to settle, economies to salvage. What do any of these things matter if the people are not free and equal? All of them. I wish there was a way for us to share what we learn from the Animus with others. Imagine being able to accurately answer questions about the past or experience lost civilizations. But how would you cite it? We can't just reveal the machine's existence to the world. Why not? Desmond's right. It would be dangerous. And we still haven't found a way to manage the bleeding effect. Maybe when we're done saving the world, we can look into it. Even if we do manage to stave off the apocalypse, it's not like the Templars are simply going to disappear. I suspect our fight will continue long after this latest battle is finished. Oh, look at the time. What oh, doesn't time fly? Look, I think it's best we get you back in the Animus, hmm? Come on, Chop Chop, we need to find that key, Desmond. It's not going to happen with you out here, is it? Look at that. I found a third power source. Already? It popped up in an earlier search, but I've only just managed to confirm it. Where? There's a museum in Cairo with one on display. I guess Connor will have to wait. No, you stay. We need to find that key, and time is running out. I'll make the trip. What about Cross? Everything's going to be fine. I'll be back soon. Ready when you are, Desmond. Winter approaches. The air is still and sharp with grim expectation. The others sense it too and go about their work with uncommon urgency. I would like to help them, but more pressing matters now demand my attention. The Templars have targeted George Washington directly and will not rest until he is dead. I had hoped to shield him from this knowledge, but Thomas Hickey ended any hope I had of staying silent. And so I have resolved to share everything I know of the Templars and their plots, of who I really am. Achilles finds fault in this, and we argue every day, but there is simply too much now at stake to maintain restraint. Don't do this, Connor! Then what would you propose we do? Sit and watch while the Templars take control? We are sworn to stop them, or have you forgotten? Assassins are meant to be quiet, precise. We do not go announcing conspiracies from the rooftops to all who pass by. Who are you to lecture anyone? You locked yourself away in this crumbling heap and gave up on the Brotherhood entirely. Since the day I arrived, you've done nothing but discourage me. And on the rare occasions you've chosen to help, you've done so little, you may as well have done nothing at all. How dare you! Then tell me, on whose watch did the Brotherhood falter? Whose inaction allowed the Templar Order to grow so large that it now controls an entire nation? If I sought to dissuade you, it was because you knew nothing. If I was reluctant to contribute, it was because you were naive. A thousand times you would have died and taken God knows how many with you. Let me tell you something, Connor. Life is not a fairy tale, and there are no happy endings. No. Not when men like you are left in charge.
In your haste to save the world, boy, take care you don't destroy it. Commander. Connor. Any word on Lee? Not yet. My apologies. I've been distracted. Supply caravans meant for the camp have gone missing. I suspect treachery. A traitor named Benjamin Church, recently released from prison, has vanished as well. The two events are surely related. What was his crime? He was caught sending letters to the Loyalists, detailing our troop strength. He claimed it was a scare tactic, that we might avoid war. A poor lie. I will find church for you. Why? What reason have you to help? Does it matter? As you wish. We've received reports of trouble along the southern road. Might be he's responsible. I suggest you begin your search there. Last words? Wait. A poor choice. To come to check up on Church? Make sure he'd stolen enough for your British brothers? Benjamin Church is no brother of mine. No more than the Redcoats or their idiot king. Oh, I expected naivete, but this... The Templars do not fight for the crown. We seek the same as you, boy. Freedom, justice, independence. But... Hmm? But what? Johnson, Pitcairn... Hickey. They sought to steal land, to sack towns, to murder George Washington. Johnson sought to own the land, that we might keep it safe. Pitcairn aimed to encourage diplomacy, which you cocked up thoroughly enough to start a goddamn war. 
And Hickey? George Washington is a wretched leader. He's lost nearly every battle in which he's taken part. The man's racked with uncertainty and insecurity. Only look at Valley Forge to know my words are true. We're all better off without him. Look, much as I'd love to spar with you, Benjamin Church's mouth is as big as his ego. You clearly want the supplies he's stolen. I want him punished. Our interests are aligned. What do you propose? A truce. Perhaps... Perhaps some time together might do us good. You are my son, after all, and might still be saved from your ignorance. I can kill you now, if you prefer. Excellent. Shall we be off? Do you even know where Benjamin Church has gone? I'm afraid not. I'd hoped to ambush him when he or one of his men returned here. It seems I'm too late. They've come and cleared the place out. I may be able to track him. There were rations inside the crates. Medical supplies and clothing as well. Snow has obscured the tracks, but enough remains that we can still follow. Just my luck. Going to freeze to death if I don't get this fixed. Are you Ben Church's man? Well played. It was not wise to run. What do you want? Where is Benjamin Church? I don't know. We was riding for a camp just north of here. It's where we'd normally unload the cargo. Maybe you'll find him there. Enough of that. You did not have to kill him. Let's not waste time with all this pointless banter. Go catch up with the rest of Church's men. Infiltrate that camp of theirs and see what you can discover. And what about you? Never you mind. Just do as I ask. Shivering and starving out there. It's a hard way to go. All they need to do is raise the white flag. They should have done that a long time ago. All this fight. Serves no purpose. The crown's sure to win in the end. To waste all those lives chasing a full motion. Great my heart.
Center camp near the tree. Can't miss it. Thank you kindly. You won't be thanking me when you hear what he's got planned. About time you showed up. Listen here. Boss wants us to try something new tonight. A raid. No more convoys. We're to steal from the Yank camp itself. Valley Fool. That's right. You sure about this? It's not my business to be sure or not sure. I just do as Church asks. If you're so concerned, take it up with him. Is he here? <laughs> Of course not. Hiding in New York, the last I heard. Trying to keep a low profile. On account of him not wanting to go back to jail and all. All right. I'm in. Look what we found. He was creeping around the camp all suspicious-like. Must be a yank spy. Ah, uh, he's something else. Something special. Isn't that right, Haytham? Church told me all about you. And you should know better than this. <clears throat> You're not really in a position to be making threats, are ya? Not yet. If you can't handle a couple of mercenaries, then we've really no business working together. Unbelievable.
Evening, Connor. I see you made it here in one piece. <laughs> Recovered from your beating, then? Benjamin Church is holed up on an abandoned brewery on the waterfront. We should be done with this by sunrise. Good. I would like to have those supplies returned as soon as possible. Of course. I wouldn't want to keep you from your lost cause. Come along, then. Follow me. Tell me something. Hmm? You could have killed me when we first met. What stayed your hand? Curiosity. Any other questions? What is it the Templars truly seek? Order. Purpose. Direction. No more than that. It's your lot that means to confound with this nonsense talk of freedom. Time was. The Assassins professed a far more sensible goal. That for peace. Freedom is peace. Oh no. It's an invitation to chaos. Only look at this little revolution your friends have started. I have stood before the Continental Congress and listened to them stamp and shout. All in the name of liberty. But it is just noise. And this is why you favor Lee? He understands the needs of this would-be nation far better than the Jobanels who profess to represent it. It seems your tongue has tasted sour grapes. The people have made their choice, and it was Washington. The people chose nothing. It was done by a group of privileged cowards seeking only to enrich themselves. They convened in private and made a decision that would benefit them. Oh, they might have dressed it up with pretty words. That does not make it true. The only difference, Connor, the only difference between myself and those you aid is that I do not feign affection. Hold a moment. Church, you clever bastard. What is it? I was hoping I could wave you past the guards, but it has replaced most of them with men I don't know. Hmm. Well, I should be able to pass without arousing suspicion, but you... No. We do this together or not at all. Then what do you propose? I will find a guard who is off duty and take his uniform. Very well. I will wait here, then. Of course you will. Oh, I'm sorry. Would you like me to come along and hold your hand, perhaps? Provide kind words of encouragement?
that should suffice. Follow me. Hold, strangers. You tread on private property. What business have you here? The father of understanding guides us. You I recognize, not the savage. He is my son. Tasted of the forest fruits, did you? Off you go, then. Must be strange for you, discovering my existence as you have. I'm actually curious to know what your mother might have said about me. Always wondered what life might have been like had she and I stayed together. How was she, by the way? Dead. Murdered. What? I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, you're sorry. I found my mother burning alive. I'll never forget her face as she sent me away. Charles Lee is responsible for her death by your order. And you're sorry. It's impossible. I gave no such order. I spoke the opposite, in fact. I told them to give up the search for the precursor site. We were to focus on more practical pursuits. It is done. And I'm all out of forgiveness. Benjamin Church, you stand accused of betraying the Templar Order and abandoning our principles in pursuit of personal gain. In consideration of your crime, I hereby sentence you to death. No! You're too late. Church and the cargo are long gone. And I'm afraid you won't be in any condition to follow. We've chosen to stand with the victor. It's Britain who will win this war! You always did prefer principle to profit. Perhaps that's why your little kingdom started to crumble. It was a nice dream you had, but a dream is all it ever was. Look at the half-breed fight, like some feral dog. Best we put him down, boys. Duncan, get him! Don't let them escape! Get him! The Indian too! Take him down! That one! And he's half free! Surround them! Where is Church? I'll tell you anything you want. Only promise that you'll let me live. You have my word. He left yesterday for Martinique. Took passage on a trading sloop called the Welcome. Loaded half its hold with the supplies he stole from the Patriots. That's all I know, I swear. <laughs> you promised. And he kept his word. Let's go. Get out of here. You don't say.
So close, yet so far. You'll need to find a way around the flames. Get back here, traitors! Oh, how I'll enjoy making you pay for your betrayal. Did church pay you well? Were you rewarded handsomely? And what good does your gold do you now? See if you can find something to pry it open. Connor? What are you up to? Oh, no, don't do that. There's no way of knowing what's on the other side! We do now. Church is at least a day on us. We must move quickly if we're to catch him. I have a ship we can use. Meet me on the pier when you're ready. Shall we? I told you this was a poor heading. Church is surely days ahead of us now. Have some faith in the boy. He's yet to disappoint. Well, the bar's not been set very high now, has it? We are closer than you think, Father. Welcome. Aye, and she's dropped anchor. Bring us in for a closer look, son. It seems the ship has been abandoned. The church always was a slippery little bastard. It's almost as though you want him to escape! How is it you can... 
came to captain a ship, given the way you sail. chance at this. More experience should take the wheel. She's passing between the cliffs, boy, and the Aquila's too big to follow. We need to go around. God damn it! We're going to lose him! What other choice have we? Those rocks would crush us! The current here is swift. We still have a chance. Enemy ships approaching! Ready our weapons! Prepare return fire! Church is using the ambush as cover! Before he escapes, send that bastard to the seafloor. No, I need his ship afloat. The cargo must be saved.
Secure the ship! Hook us in! Bring her close! Two arms! Two arms! Man the swivels! Cover from the quarter deck! Secure the aft line! High off the bow! I need to get below deck. Who knows what madness my father intends? What has Church done with the cargo? It's been quite an adventure. Let me tell you, working my way through your nasty little tricks and traps. Clever! Some of them anyway. I'll give you credit for that. And for the quietude with which you pulled it off. We had a dream, Benjamin! A dream you sought to destroy! And for that, my fallen friend, you will be made to pay! Enough! We came here for a reason. Different reasons, it seems. Where are the supplies you stole? Go to hell. I ask again. Where are the supplies? On the island beyond. Awaiting pickup. But you've no right to it. It isn't yours. No. Not mine. Those supplies are meant for men and women who believe in something bigger than themselves. Who fight and die that one day they might be free from tyranny such as yours. <laughs> are these the same men and women who fight with muskets forged from British steel? Who bind their wounds with bandages sewn by British hands. How convenient for them. We do the work. They reap the rewards. You spin a story to excuse your crimes. As though you're the innocent one and they the thieves. It's all a matter of perspective. There is no single path through life that's right and fair and does no harm. Do you truly think the crown has no cause? No right to feel betrayed? You should know better than this. As dedicated as you are to fighting Templars, who themselves see their work as just. Think on that the next time you insist your work alone befits the greater good. Your enemy would beg to differ. And would not be without cause. Zamani oski na diah ne te kan tu ti do kaske. You did well. This passing was a boon for us both. Come on. I expect you'll want my help retrieving everything from the island.
I have been reunited with my father, but I do not yet know if this bodes well or ill. Our goals are aligned, at least so far as independence is concerned. But he continues to defend Charles Lee, the man who murdered my mother and burned my village. Still, he makes a point about Washington and those who back him. I hear much talk of freedom and equality, but it seems one must be a landed white man to benefit. What if someone like me, or Surrey? What role for us in this new world? Is my father right then? There is so much I must consider and so little time in which to do it. Welcome back. And how was Martinique? Achilles, I... I owe you an apology. It was wrong of me to say the things I did. Your words were harsh, Connor. But there was also truth there. I feel the order. Allowed the Templars to take control. But now their hold is weakened which makes me believe there's a chance for peace. Imagine what might be accomplished if we were to unite. Why the change of heart? Where is this coming from? You've met your father, haven't you? I do not claim to trust the man or even like him. But I would be remiss to ignore this opportunity. Aether may listen, but will he understand? And even if he does, will he agree? Even he must admit that we can achieve more together than we do alone. I assume you're off to find him. Yes. I ride for New York to see what might be done. to know what the Loyalists are planning, if we're to put an end to this. I've tried, but the soldiers themselves are told nothing now, only to await orders from above. Keep digging. Come find me when you have something worth sharing. We're so close to victory. A few more well-placed attacks and we'll be able to put an end to the Civil War and be rid of the Crown. What do you intend? Well, nothing at the moment, since we're completely in the dark. I thought the Templars had eyes and ears everywhere. Oh, we did until you started cutting them off. Your contact said orders from above. It tells us exactly what we need to do. Track down the Loyalist commanders. Thank you. 
Have you considered the proposal? I'm unconvinced. To reinforce them would leave New York exposed. It's hard enough maintaining order with our current numbers. Cut in half. Yet if we do not join with them, they risk defeat. And then what? Well, they should have come by sea. Well, they're talking in circles. We're nothing watching as we are. Then what do you propose we do? March in there and demand answers? Well, yes. Ah! Ambush! Connor? It'll help here. Bring them back to my quarters at Fort George and see what secrets they might share. <sighs> really? Well, you'd best get after him then. You go. I will watch the prisoners. No, you do it. Why me? Because I said so. Now go. Move! Wait, wait. I I'll tell you anything you want. Anything. Only don't make We just have some there. questions for you. Cross that threshold, and I'm a dead man. There you are, Connor. I was worried you might have gotten lost. Come along, then. What are the British planning? To march from Philadelphia. That city's finished. New York's the key. They'll double our numbers, push back the rebels. When do they begin? Two days from now. June 18th. I must warn Washington. You see? That wasn't so very difficult now, was it? I I've told you everything. N now let me go. Of course. The other two said the same. It must be true. You killed him. You killed all of them. Why? They'd have warned the Loyalists. You could have held them until the fight was done. What? And West 
precious time and money on their care. What would be the point? They'd given up everything they knew. I'll meet you at Valley Forge. should be sharing what we know with Lee, not Washington. You seem to think I favor him, but my enemy is a notion, not a nation. It is wrong to compel obedience, whether to the British crown or the Templar cross. And I hope in time the Loyalists will see this too, for they are also victims. You oppose tyranny, injustice. These are just symptoms. Their true cause is human weakness. Why do you think I keep on trying to show you the error of your way? You have said much, yes, but you have shown me nothing. Then we'll have to remedy that, then, won't we? Sir. Hello, Connor. What brings you here? The British have recalled their men in Philadelphia. They march for New York. Very well. I'll move our forces to Monmouth. If we can rout them, we'll have finally turned the tide. And what's this? Private correspondence! Oh, of course it is. Would you like to know what it says, Connor? It seems your good friend here has just ordered an attack on your village. Although attack might be putting it mildly. Well, tell him, Commander. We've been receiving reports of Allied natives working with the British. I've asked my men to put a stop to it. By burning their villages and salting the land, by calling for their extermination, according to this letter. Not the first time, either. Tell them what you did 14 years ago. That was another time. The Seven Years' War. 
And so now you see what happens to this great man when under duress. He makes excuses, displaces blame, does a great many things, in fact, except take responsibility! Enough! Who did what and why must wait. My people come first. Then let's be off. No. You and I are finished. Son. Do you think me so soft that by calling me son, I might change my mind? How long do you sit on this information, or am I to believe you discovered it now? My mother's blood may stain another's hands, but Charles Lee is no less a monster, and all he does, he does by your command. A warning to you both. Choose to follow me or oppose me, and I will kill you. should make sure the village is safe. Radun Hagedun Za Shewe Nekti Ohnu Jera Wat Ganu Dunyu Hwe Dogati Ga Oya Lungwe Aya Zene Sege Unka Giga Oya Lungwe De Ohne Gujesh Charles Lee Luana Dukwa Yash Sagoya Donhawe Ganot Dogu Dano Doh Karat Ni Hadi Nahoda Ga Nuwe Nyehonenu Wat De Sagodi Dashtana Tini Hadi Ayun Kiyun Hunda Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house.
Onak ti ya shaga ne te dom zom da ke da ste. ガナガナドゴ。ナホダ。ゴエゴモハクロリネチャールスリー。バトリオトテホナドホンゾニアンキアワント。ダノガンイーゼアセイエノワアゼ。アトガティガロンゴエ。ワハンロズディザニゴラ
allowed to push through, we will lose what precious little ground we have gained. The sacrifices your brothers have made today must not have been in vain. Now go! Bring the fight to our enemy! Make them rule the day they marched upon us! Connor, my friend. You have arrived just in time to bear witness to our glorious victory. Where is Charles Lee? That batar. He shows up in the middle of our preparations and just takes charge. Screams at everyone to advance and then rise away. I am left to pick up the pieces. Where did they come from? Send word that we are falling back! Everyone, to me! Now! Now! I will hold the area while you bring them to safety. I grant you my finest soldiers to serve as your personal guard. There is nothing they will not do to ensure you are victorious. Bonne chance, mon ami. Mission, sir, and the enemy advances. Then we need to pull back, rejoin the others, and cover their escape.
Well done, my friend. You have saved many lives today. Connor? Charles Lee has betrayed you. He forced retreat in the midst of battle, hoping the lost would take the lives of your men and see you relieved of your command. What? I'm sure he will come and spin a tale saying that he was outnumbered or I was somehow to blame. All lies. I will say it one last time. That man is your enemy and he will not stop until you are dead or dishonored. Connor's tale rings true. Lee was acting most odd upon the battlefield. I will investigate these allegations at once. The time for that is long past. This must be done properly, else we're no better than those we oppose. Never mind the political ramifications of such an act. Should you choose to spare Lee's life, then I will take it myself. Enjoy your victory, Commander. It will be the last I deliver you. Something's happened, Desmond. Abstergo has your dad. Where? Italy. Same place they were holding you. What are you two waiting for? Let's go. There's more. Hello again, Mr. Miles. I hope this message finds you well, or as well as it can, all things considered. It appears we now each have something the other desires. I propose a trade. Bring me the apple, and I'll return your father to you no worse for the wear. Should you refuse, he will still be returned, albeit much worse for the wear. I assume you'd like to avoid an unpleasant outcome. I always knew it would come to this. Just not so soon. I wonder if Abstergo even knows what's about to happen. I mean, has this been a part of their plan all along? Maybe they want the world to end. To see it all burned away. Then they'd have their new world. Ripe for the reshaping. We talked about looking for another power source. Leaving him there. It's probably what he'd want. For us to finish the mission. But I can't. It's hard enough taking a life, but letting one be taken? Knowing there was something I could do about it? Not a chance. Might be I'm risking my life, risking all our lives to save an asshole. What else am I supposed to do? That asshole is my dad. They're probably holding your father on the upper level. Same place they kept you. There's an elevator bank down the hall. Try not to let them see. They know I'm here, Rebecca. There's no way they don't. This... this was a bad idea.
Hand over your weapons and come with me, sir. I can show myself in, but thanks for the offer. I'd rather this not turn ugly, Mr. Miles. Then let me through. Subdue the subject, please. Where's my father? <laughs> You'll see him soon enough. Now be a good boy and wait for security to fetch you. You're gonna have to climb the rest of the way. on him. He can't be far. Where the hell is he? Give me the apple. Let's not draw this out. You got nowhere to go, and I've got a gun. Speaking of which, it's the 21st century, and you're still running around with only a tiny knife for protection? <laughs> it's stupid. All right, Desmond. Game's over. Not now. Not now. Inya is just a robot. Yet, get out! What the hell was that?
Where's Vidic? Fifth floor. Vidic's office is up ahead. You... You killed him! Dead? Not so fast, Mr. Miles. In case you hadn't noticed, I'm the one calling the shots. Now give me the apple. You want it? Fine. Here it is. Wait! No! never should have come here. You put everything on the line. For what? So you could rescue your father? Yeah. I'd get the power source hooked up before heading back into the Animus. But it's your call. One that was dark and cold. It would consume us. For we were flesh, and flesh is frail. Though suits and shields might offer comfort, such adornments would not suffice. Not to save us all. So we sought to change what we were. In this manner, we might thrive in a world made poisonous. It was Aita who volunteered to see if it might be done. Aita, my husband, my love. In the end, it changed him, ruined him. He was made a prisoner of the machines. 
the body might survive, but his mind became brittle to the touch. He begged me for release, for days, for weeks, for months. I pleaded with him to give us time to find another way. But, but there, there wasn't, wasn't one. one. Not, not for, for him. him. Not, not for, for us. us. Consciousness but a series of electrical impulses and the body a vessel to hold these sparks But it is weak in time it decays and crumbles into dust We asked ourselves then what if it might be replaced with something stronger something better so we forged a new vessel, one that might endure. It proved easy enough to enter. But to leave, to leave required something more, something wrong. And so this too they abandoned. I wondered though. Were they right to turn away? I regret not asking you to hack into the Abstergo servers while you were there. A couple of well-placed relays and we'd be swimming in information. We have everything we need. Yeah, except the key. We're close. How do you know? I just do. I've been poking around a bit. Did you know there are machines down here that make, well, mana? Wizard mana or biblical mana? What do you think? Biblical, of course. The Greeks called it Ambrosia. The Indians, Amrit or Soma. Most cultures around the world refer to a divine food, though I'd say its taste is anything but. You ate something that came out of a 75,000-year-old machine? And I live to tell the tale. So? What did it taste like? Cardboard. Tasted of cardboard. Hardly the stuff of legends, though I wonder if the first civilization didn't taste differently than we do. Maybe the flavorizer broke. Flavorizer! You've certainly got away with words, Rebecca. Things are getting worse outside. What do you mean? 
Every day for the past two weeks, the sun has been throwing off larger and larger flares. Older satellites are starting to malfunction. I hear rumblings of recalling the crew on the International Space Station. There's already work being done as well to shield power stations and transformers on the ground. Not that any of it matters. This goes far beyond some brownouts. We all saw what's actually coming. Do you know how it works? Look, I'm no physicist, but it, it's something to do with the Earth's geomagnetic field. The flares and mass ejections disturb it, which appears to trigger seismic events. I've tried reaching out to people who might know better, but they all insist it's bunk. And I don't blame them. It sounds ridiculous. I wish it was. Best we finish up with Connor. Come on, Desmond. In you go. Hey, do you think killing Vidic set Abstergo back? I doubt it. I'm sure he pioneered the Animus, but they've had the technology for decades now. Plenty of other people can take his place. And Cross? Oh, he was a loose cannon. I doubt anyone's mourning his death. I think these days he was more a symbol than an asset. Hmm. I'm sorry, I don't mean to dismiss what you did but it's going to take a lot more than a couple of deaths to stop the Templars. Did Vidic put you in an animus when you were at Abstergo? They'd be able to search your memories and track you back here. Oh, they definitely tried, but I made things difficult for them. You can resist, you can cloud up the transmission, or just refuse to move. Eventually, they would have gotten what they needed, but it still would have taken them weeks. Vidic threatened to put me in a coma once. It would have made you more pliable. But if the user isn't engaged, it's a mess. I know they've been working on ways to extract memories and let others sift through those memories. Maybe they're even analyzing mine right now. Maybe they'll find us. I don't know. What I do know is that we've got to get through that door. Yeah. I should probably get back into the Animus. Hey. So, um... When this is over, and... Uh... Assuming it all works out, I was hoping I could, you know, come home. I'd like nothing more. We're almost there, son. We'll have plenty of time to talk when this is all over. We should focus on our work now. Hey, Desmond, didn't Subject 16's... His name was Clay. Sorry, didn't Clay say Washington was a Templar? No, he indicated that Washington came into contact with an Apple of Eden, but beyond that, it's all speculation. Furthermore, judging from the portrait referenced by Clay, the event occurred much later in Washington's life. Perhaps Connor wasn't even involved. It's very hard to know for sure. We'll just have to wait and see what, if anything, happens. So what was it like being back at Abstergo? I didn't expect to get out of there alive. It's a good thing Cross broke down the way he did. If he wasn't losing his mind, I'd probably be dead. I guess he never really recovered. What do you mean? When he first came to us, he was exhibiting symptoms of the bleeding effect. It was real bad. He'd just go in and out at a moment's notice. No animus required. Got a little violent, too, sometimes. It took a while and a bunch of therapy, but we thought we had it under control. Once he went back over to Abstergo, though, who knows what they did to him. I still worry about that happening to me. He was raised in an animus, Desmond. There's overexposure, and then there's... Daniel. Poor guy. That could never happen to you. We won't let it. Hey, when this is all over, we should take a trip somewhere. Celebratory vacation. Yeah. That sounds nice. I'll listen to you. Italy, Brazil, and the United States, all in the span of a few weeks. And you're complaining about not getting out enough? Seriously, Sean? No, not seriously. Are you mad? Trust me, no one wants time off more than I do, right? Do you have any idea how hard it is to crank those database entries out as fast as I do? The sooner we're done here, the sooner we can take that vacation. Yeah, we should probably get back to work.
Home stretch, Desmond. I can feel it. The tides of war are turning. The Loyalists fall back beneath the advancing Patriot army, their hold on this land weakening by the day. But the Templars only seem to grow stronger. Though fewer in number, the threat they pose appears undiminished. Making matters worse, Washington chose to spare the life of Charles Lee. I am told he has taken refuge inside Fort George, and so my days are spent searching for a way to breach its walls. Of my father, there is no trace, and I am glad of it. If I can be rid of Lee, there may still be a chance for reconciliation, and through it, peace. Connor, he's asking for you. Hello, come. Come now. Your sadness won't sustain me any more than that fool woman's soups and potions. Tell me of your latest exploits. Charles Lee has been exposed and the Patriots finally rid of him. They march now to secure the remaining cities that this country might finally be free. Then you have won. The land and your people are safe. Yet you seem troubled. Washington spared Lee's life. So long as he lives, all are in danger. The same is true for your father. When you first came to me, you understood what had to be done. Swore you'd see it through. If not for the Brotherhood, for your people, and all those threatened by the Templars. But with Lee gone, my father might... Listen to me. You have not come this far to throw it all away over misplaced sentiment. Both men must die. A Achilles. There is nothing more to discuss. Connor, I came as soon as I could. Tell me you bring good news. The Comte de Grasse said yes. You need only join his fleet in Chesapeake Bay and they will serve as required. But what exactly is it you intend? It's better that I show you. Charles Lee may have been dismissed, but it does not mean we are safe. But the commander... The commander underestimates the threat and no more time can be wasted trying to convince him otherwise. I must do this on my own. Do what exactly? Kill Charles Lee. He hides within Fort George, which is itself surrounded by a militarized district. I cannot hope to infiltrate it directly. So I will go under instead. Incroyable. The tunnels leading to the fort have been filled in. While I secure the Admiral's ships, I need you to clear them for me. And the ships? When signaled, they will bombard the fort. Breaching its walls and creating a distraction, I see. In the chaos, I will slip inside, find Charles Lee, and silence him forever.
I had promised me a fleet beyond compare and a captain without peer. Instead, I find myself greeted by one old ship in a boy in costume. I promise we are all you need, Admiral. I doubt this very much, but beggars do not choose. Hmm? And the ships I require? They are yours, provided we survive this. Well, what would you have me do? Hold the bay while I engage the main fleet. Should any British ships dare approach, destroy them. They must be kept from Yorktown. Is us. I only hope the Admiral's quick to return. Enemy approaching! All right, boys! Make ready for war! Looks like they're coming to say hello. Ready yourself! Aye, aye!
We're on our own now, sir. Ah, God. Where are our blasted reinforcements? They will come. We must hold the bay until they do. No, oh, this is madness. You're alone and we're without reinforcements. They say you took down that man of war all alone. Perhaps Lafayette did not exaggerate when he spoke of your abilities. As promised, my ships are yours to command. What do you require? Five of them must enter New York's harbor flying British flags. Wait, wait. I thought you might need some pirates killed or goods transported, and instead, you asked for us to... What, shell New York? No. Of course not. Ah. Only part of it. Explain yourself. I mean to infiltrate Fort George, but it is too well guarded. Cannon fire will breach its walls and scatter its guards. And a ship that flies the French flag could never get near it. You understand, then? Not at all. But a promise is a promise, even when made to a lunatic. I will light a signal fire when it is time for you to attack. Vous l'avez entendu, récupérez leurs drapeaux qu'on puisse les accrocher. Allez, vite Hello, Connor. Welcome back. Is everything in place Oui. Lafayette waits for you inside the tunnel beneath the city. Fitz 
on one broadsheet. left to the people once more. Connor! This tunnel will take you into the military district. And the Admiral? He waits for you to light the signal. And then the strike begins. And we will be there as well.
I'm in no condition to fight. Need to stay away from the guards. Where are you, Charles? Gone. Come now. You cannot hope to match me, Connor. With all your skills, you are still but a boy. With so much left to learn. Give me Lee! Impossible. He is the promise of a better future. The sheep need a shepherd. He has been dismissed and censured. He can do nothing for you now. A temporary setback. He will be restored. Ah, you act as though you have some right to judge. Ah, to declare... Ah, and yet everything I've shown you, all I've said and done, should clearly demonstrate... Not harm your people. Uh, surrender, and I will spare you. Brave words from a man about to die. You fare no better. <laughs> Even when your kind appears to triumph. Still we rise again, and do you know why? It's because the Order is born of a realization. We require no creed, no indoctrination by desperate old men. All we need is that the world be as it is. And this is why the Templars will never be destroyed. saying I was wrong. I will not weep and wonder what might have been. I'm sure you understand. Still, I'm proud of you in a way. You have shown great conviction, strength, courage, all noble qualities. I should have killed you long ago. We've got a problem. Haytham doesn't have the amulet anymore. But the temple's still sending data. There must be more to the story. Only one way to find out. My father is dead. Charles Lee now leads the Templar Order in his place. I see now why ours is an eternal war. For each piece taken from the board, another is placed upon it. Back and forth we go. Across the world. Across the ages. Some days mine feels an impossible task. But I cannot afford to be consumed with doubt. The people need me now more than ever. I must stop the Templars. I will kill Charles Lee. We 
gather today to remember a man of peerless vision who sought to change the world. And change the world he did. Look around. Even now, the British prepare to retreat. Their spirits broken. Their forces splintered. The Patriot leadership shall soon follow. Either into our service or into the ground. And then, my friends, all of this will finally be ours. We have Haytham to thank for this. He and all those others who sacrificed for our cause. But he was not content merely to save the people of America, no. He sought to save those sworn to our destruction. He sought to save the assassins. I. It seems a mad thing now. And it cost him his life. The assassins are a cruel and terrible coven. They speak only the language of death. Too late he learned the truth of this. Murdered by his own son. He gave his life as he lived it. In service to a dream we all share. And so we must fight on. We will vanquish our enemies. We will spread our word. And in time, my brothers and sisters, in time, we will have our new world. He sent me away that day at Fort George. He feared for my safety. I should have stayed. He said there was no danger. He was wrong. I will kill you, Connor. This I swear. Not here, though. Not today. No. First... First, I'll destroy all you hold dear. I'll burn that homestead of yours to the ground and roast the severed heads of your precious founding fathers in its flames. And when I've finished with them, all the rest will burn as well. Your merry band of assassins, the human refuse that lives on your land, your village and its people, all of it, gone. You can try, Charles. But as with all your schemes, this too will end in failure. Get him on his feet. He will wait. He will watch. And then, when he's seen all his life's work brought to ruin, only then will I allow him to die. Take him away.
is Charles Lee gone? The harbor. To catch a ferry. I believe these men meet the requirements. You believe incorrectly. They're sick and weak. We're looking to build an army, not fill an arms house. It would take months to get them into fighting shape. We don't have the time. No, please. We'll do anything you want. Anything. Only take us with you. Quiet, well. Your merchandise is useless to us. Perhaps we should discuss this back in my cabin.
sorry to have disappointed. As you should be. For us to have come all this way for nothing. Tell me now why I shouldn't have you thrown into the sea. No need to be rash. Only give me a little more time. I'll scour the other ships if I must. I'm certain there are prisoners who will meet your needs. Very well. You have two days. Thank you. Present yourself to the Green Dragon Tavern in Boston with the men you've chosen. We shall meet you there along with our master. Something, darling? No. Oh, rude. Can I help you? You know you can. Pardon? Oh! I do not like having my time wasted. Stop that! Oh, don't, don't make me call the guards! Make a sound and you die. What do you want? He's in the harbor, at the Long Pier, most likely. We heard what happened at the parade. Charles got all nervous. Said he was leaving the country. I thought he was overreacting. I guess not. No. Oh. Thank you.
Why do you persist? You put us down, we rise again. You end one plot, we forge another. You try so hard, but it always ends the same. Those who know you think you mad, and this is why. Even those men you sought to save have turned their backs on you. Yet you fight. You resist. Why? Because no one else will. <laughs> Rough night, was it? He headed inland. Took a ferry up the Charles River. I will need passage as well. Of course. Only say the word. Why would they leave this behind? Ah, uh, long have 
we waited for you to return. You have done as we asked. You have succeeded. No, I have failed. My people are gone, chased out by those who I thought would protect them. It is a trade, a sacrifice, and not in vain. For you have found it. This? Now you must hide it, where none shall think to look. And then in time, in time, what once was shall be again. I do not understand. Nor need you. Only do as we ask. Then. You may do as you wish. But what of my people? You have saved this place, as was your people's purpose, and that matters most. It is not enough. It will never be enough. You strive for that which does not exist. Still, you have made a difference, and you will do so again. Remember, you must hide the amulet where none might find it. I know where the key is. Then let's go! This is it. We're right behind you. Moment of truth.
Yes. Come. Here, at last. You know our story now. Of how we tried. Of how we failed. All our hopes extinguished. Save one. Your touch. A spark. A spark to save the world. Wait! Do not touch the pedestal. Minerva? You! But how? You left! You destroyed the device! Did you think there was only one? What the hell is going on here? You must not free her. Free her? Juno dwells within these walls, awaiting release. I will explain. While we worked to save the world, she sought instead to conquer it. She used our machines to set her plans in motion. Divination through numbers. There is a pattern to existence. To comprehend the calculations is to tame time. This was my focus. And so I built the eye to aid us. But she turned it towards her own ends. When we discovered her treachery, we put a stop to it. And then we left. But first we called to you that you might try again. We thought it would be safe with her gone. Now I see we were deceived. She survived, she endured, and then she began to work. For centuries, Tinny and I walked the world, hoping to rekindle the spark of civilization. We shared what we knew as best we could. We were not the only ones, but for all the power we wrought, still death would claim us. But before it did, I would have one last look to know if we had succeeded. That's how you're here now? I had hoped you might find this place and finish our work. But it is too late. You and the Templars have squabbled over our refuse. You have wasted centuries, and so you have lost your chance. You cannot hope to stop the end now, Desmond. Only to survive. She's lying! Only touch the pedestal and the world will be saved. Better the world burn than she be loosed upon it. Is that so? Show him then. But he will not understand. It is complicated. It is... Show me. If you heed Minerva, the sun will have its way. The ground will crack and spit fire into the skies. All the world will burn. But this does not end the world. Merely heralds its arrival. Darkness follows. Then you emerge, resolving to lay a foundation that such a tragedy does not befall the world again. You will become a symbol to those who survive. Hope, knowledge, determination. You will inspire them to rebuild, to thrive once more. And as the world heals, so too will humanity. But you are just a man, frail and mortal. You pass from the world, leaving behind only a memory, a legacy. You will be remembered first as a hero, later as a legend, and in time, as a god. It is the cruelest fate to have written words that meant well, and see them made wicked and unwise. What was meant to encourage life, used instead to justify taking it. And so now you see, that what was shall be again. So tell me, how is this better? She would sacrifice you, sacrifice the world, for no other reason than to deny me vindication. They will enslave your kind, Desmond. Is this not why you fight? Is this not why you came here? to ensure more than just your race's future. But it's freedom? What future? What freedom? Billions dead and the whole cycle begun anew? This world has known nothing but heartache and horror since we left it. Our gift to them, and you'd see it all returned. Enough! You must not do this. 
Whatever Juno's planning, however terrible it might seem today, we'll find a way to stop it. But the alternative, what you want, there's no hope there. If you free her, you'll be destroyed. It will happen in an instant. There will be no pain. You mustn't. It's done, Minerva. The decision's made. Then the consequences of this mistake are yours to live and to die with. You need to go. All of you. Now. Get as far away from here as you can. Come with us. We'll find another way. There isn't time. Son. You know it's true. It's already started. I need to do this now. So go. Go!